Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the second episode of Battle Rap Resume. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm your host Tom Quee, as ever. Uh, I just want to say before we get into today's episode, really appreciate everyone who's reacted to the episode positively. I released it online a couple of days ago and I guess this episode is coming out sort of the end of February. So it's been out for about a month now and the response uh, has been fantastic really. You know, on Twitter, on Facebook, Reddit, Viewpoint, all those sort of good points and stuff like that. People have just been... Um, really responding positive to it. And I know it's not like a perfect thing and I just wanted feedback to kind of mold it and stuff, but it's going really well. And uh, <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm not going to take all the credit or anything. The reason it went so well is because Shox was uh, a really good guest. I was so happy to have Shox on board. And um, I just want to say thanks again because I've been a huge fan for ages. So it was I would genuinely just like to talk to the guy anyway. So it was just kind of a nice excuse that we got to record it and put it out. And um, I know that people have responded really well. And a lot of people have just been like, I can't believe I've listened to the whole thing, you know, and because I get that it is quite long and if you're not kind of into podcasting or whatever or don't do that much like they tend to be kind of two three hours and it kind of it, it's informed for those niches really but people have said you know I can't believe it just whizzed by and they really enjoyed it so yeah I want to say thank you and um, there are going to be more episodes of course uh, if you want to if you want to find out about the further ones, we're at Battle Rap Resume on Twitter, uh, Battle Rap Resume at gmail.com if you want to send me a message. Also got a Facebook group as well, and surprisingly, Battle Rap Resume. Just follow that and just comment and like and all those sort of stuff. That would be really, really good. Um, so today, just before we get into today's guest, I wanted to speak about something that really interests me and was probably my great passion in terms of writing prior to um, Battle Rap and kind of since. Like, I've always been... Uh, a fan of poetry ever since I was younger you know when you're in sort of GCSE and you study those Norton anthology annuals and everyone does the same poems of like you know Limbo and I'm thinking of um, Caroline Duffy and those sort of things Education for Leisure you know these sort of poems and I was a kid that loved it back then I did you know even then and I've grown to love poetry like I saw poetry very early as almost like an artist thing in the same way that a musician will bring out albums and those songs are in a specific order and they're, those songs encapsulate a specific moment in their growth and I saw that with poetry quite early on so I started to read a lot of poets books and just kind of not see them as things in anthologies and I think that helped and you know I think that I think that just sparked a lifelong love for it really and then inevitably I got into spoken word poetry as well which is kind of actually linked to Harry Baker I'll kind of elaborate on that story when Harry comes on Harry has uh, been said that he wants to be on the podcast which is a great honor as well that's going to be an awesome episode in the far off future but yeah um, it was through Harry Baker and I was just kind of captured really by the dexterity of it the skill involved like for me there's a divide in certain spoken word scenes um i'm not really a fan of london my, my not a, not that i'm not a fan of london sorry like i've just not really been to many of the london nights just because of geographically where i am um but my guest today i know is a fan of that and can elaborate on that later but i've been to manchester birmingham um liverpool these were the scenes that i know best and there always seems to be this divide in performance between craft and message so many people in spoken word can get wrapped up in just doing this great poem about something that it's kind of a point that you've heard a million times before but whatever you know it's uplifting and it's engaging but it's not written very well like the, there's either the writers who take great relish in every single line and really want to pump it out and make you really think and make it really intricate and then there's the people who want to kind of do their poems about peace and that, that's fine but sometimes I listen to those and I think they're a little bit more like a, I, I'd get more out of a lecture or an essay than I would just a poem there so that's kind of why I was really into spoken word you know the intricacies of it and that's kind of how I got into spoken word as a whole through soul and matter so to bring it back to today, I just like to sort of talk about the Venn diagram because there's a lot of battlers that have gone into battling who originally are from spoken word. There's probably five or six off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more US ones as well, but there's definitely um, there's definitely a big contingent in Don't Flop. You know, I'm speaking about people like Harry Baker, obviously, uh, Stowaway. I don't know if anyone remembers Simon Mole. Um, he only had one battle uh, against Enigma at Latitude Festival, where also Mark Grist, another poet, um, battled Mickey Worthless, um, which was a really, really weird, not very good battle. But yeah, Simon Simon Mole, check out his poem Making Bread. He's an absolutely brilliant spoken word poet that came into it. But he left soon after. You know, his style was probably a little bit too affected. Like, you know, there are the spoken word poets that really feel like spoken word poets. Like even Harry Baker, who is just had an unbelievable run of late, the last year or so. He's had so many great battles. He's such a brilliant writer. But you still feel that with him you know you still feel in the cadence it still feels a little poetic delivery that's not to play it down or whatever but you know sometimes it's very hard to ameliorate yourself to be in that venn diagram between poet and battler and to perform both convincingly which is kind of where I come into my um, my guest today, my guest for the second episode. Um, this person, this is Crafty, as you've probably uh, probably noticed from the title of the for the episode, um, is someone that I kind of consider almost like the poet battler 2.0. You 
you know he's kind of like he's pushed forward in the kind of the attention to detail and the incredible lyricism and and and, and rhythms but he has that battler's edge i mean not only is he technically brilliant but his way of attacking opponents is very battler-esque rather than poet-esque there's not a viciousness there there's just a sense of kind of attack that i find really refreshing so i'm really looking forward to today's discussion uh, in a roundabout way um we've gotten to crafty craft how you doing man I'm really good, man. How are you doing, Tom? Yeah, I'm good. I am. I'm so happy to uh, to have you on board. No, nah, pleasure episode. to be here, man. This pleasure is, to be here. This is going to be this is going to be really good. Um, just before we close out the poetry section, I just want to touch on one note that I forgot about. Obviously, I do a little bit of spoken word as well, and I came at it from that kind of becoming a battler who's been a poet kind of thing so it had that in there and i just want to say shout out to carl dunlop who commented on my uh, battle against 142 um which can be found on don't flop extra i think it's almost got four thousand views so um it's, it's it's topping out um he says soliloquy isn't as shit as he has been now that he's got the mark gris jr thing going on thank you he says that 142 is though so i mean there's there's that level there how do you feel i mean when you were coming at battling had you been performing spoken word for a while because i noticed your twitter was registered quite a few years ago so you've been going as crafty for a while oh yeah my twitter's been up there for a while. i wasn't really active on twitter for probably a couple of years you know even even really the time i started battling i started tweeting more but it's kind of different with me i guess man because um i'm kind of come from as a rapper you know mm. i started rapping i started writing lyrics and raps and music and then i got more into poetry it was more of a natural oh, okay. kind of journey into poetry but I, I do that more predominantly now that's what i do that's what i gig and what i do more but I, I still do the rap stuff. I'm kind of writing an EP now, that sort of st- the debut EP that is because I haven't had a proper official project out yet. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. That's why I'm kind of more of a poet. But now I, I started out rapping, man. Mm-hmm. But I've always I'm like you. I list, I love the page poets growing up, yeah. And so I love the hip hop artists. So being able to bridge the two is kind of what I've always wanted to do, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll jump right into it. We'll, we'll discuss that. We've got a lot to discuss now. So we'll talk about your um your tryout, your tryout versus Ambi. Yeah. Um. How did this come together? Was it true that he- what Heretic was saying about obviously you did do the rap genius annotations? Was that what fed into this, or was this more of just you just applied and you know? What the rap? No, nah, no, nah, the rap. Did... <laughs> That's a really funny story. <laughs> we'll but, get um, into that. We'll get into that. I'll show you comment to that battle later <laughs> yeah. anyway. But um. No, that's really funny. I, I do a lot of stuff like that, man. I, less, like, I just like annotating rap. I like yeah, annotating other people's raps and like yeah. kind of getting into it. Um, especially something like battle rap, which wouldn't be seen academically, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I think I think has every right to be seen academically because it's it's as intelligent, if not more so, than a lot of the page poet stuff you you kind of mm-hmm. do in school. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that has nothing to do with it. I'm Er uh, and Bamalam. Yeah, both saw me perform poetry. So they both saw me perform at a night called Bang Said the Gun. Yes, yes. In London. Um, so that's basically where they... And Harry was performing at night as well. So I was there with Harry. And they saw me perform there. And then we just got chatting. I was speaking to her as well. We were walking back to the station. I was talking about trying out for Don't Flop. He was like, cool. Kind of just took my number and then did it from there. Then like a couple months later, I was on the card at training days. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was a, and it, what's good is it's a good tryout. It's kind of it's not kind of like shocks and smart Alex. No disrespect on smart Alex, but it's not really like about as it were. It kind of it's quite clear from round one who's going to take this. Obviously, that's when tries <laughs> were, were were three rounds. Uh, this this try is two rounds, but I think but I think Ambi is you know really decent and like it's really good to see as well that Ambi's just gotten stronger and stronger here. Researching you did prove a pickle. I wasn't even sure this dude's official, but I can still use a trick or two to wriggle through the riddles. He's a bigger guy and could say that he's huge and crippled. He's got a son, but I'm not going to call this dude if it was crude and fickle. Fuck winging it. I'm going straight through the middle. I had to mouse hunt for clues and riddles, but I can still makes you a little ambi is brilliant man i rate ambi so highly i rate ambi so high <clears throat> like he had little things to polish after his tryout i think he went i think he went back a couple of steps for his next two battles he won't mind me saying that no. and then after that he has just gone to new levels like he is certified one of the the funnier and better writers in the league right now Yes, yeah, and uh, I, I, it might be out when this video releases, but I saw it on the Christmas card. Him versus Locksmith, um, yeah, really, really great. solid battle. Like it's really, it's really enjoyable. Kind of similar with Pedro and A, but less so in that regard. But it's very, it's really good to see an established battler go against a new battler with yeah. no ego involved. It's just for the sake of you know what it is, the enjoyment of it and stuff. And um, Ambi kind of washed Locksmith, so that was really good. But um, we'll, 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 get, <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get into this battle. So. I've noticed something in your battles um, that I really enjoy. There's a few, there's a few sort of little kind of tropes that inevitably have came out because, like, I'm watching these battles all the time and kind of listening to them and just kind of making notes and just making sure that I capture everything really because that's the important thing. And I'm gonna sort of 
I guess I'm going to call this, in lieu of a better name, I'm going to call it the crafty ramp up, which is basically when you kind of almost have this ignition start in your verse, where you get the really, really powerful hitting multis, and this comes really, really early in the ambi battle. And okay. uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic because you speak about the idea of researching your opponent and finding out details about them and going into kind of like, you know, the backdrop, which is obviously really hard, especially if you're a tryout, um, because these people, apropos of this battle, are probably not known online anyway. So, you yeah. know, where you start, start. So you, um, you build on that. You say, researching for you did prove a pickle. I wasn't even sure if this dude's official, but I can still use a trick or two to wriggle through the riddles. He's a bigger guy. I could say that he's huge and crippled. He's got a son, but I'm not going to call this dude a fiddle that's crude and fickle fuck winging it i had to mouse hunt for clues and riddles but i can still make Stuart little yeah um, that was we, pretty much that was the first little little scheme i guess yeah 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 and like, not, I, with, with him particularly and be like all i had access i didn't even know until the day before the battle he had a twitter i didn't even know he was on twitter like <laughs> yeah. i saw two profile pictures from his facebook page and i've managed to find out by just being a bit of a weirdo online that he had a um uh company right the clothes company so yes. i knew about that that's literally the two and he was mates with shuffle t because bamalam told me that was it <laughs> literally i and i so i used those angles and did as much as i could in that battle and that was all i had whereas no, no, had, no, like, no. My music a lot of stuff so it was in, it was quite tough it's it's lovely um I, lo- I love the fact that the scheme is very meta because not only do you point out that well i don't know anything but he's fat and he has a child so i could write two rounds on that you know, yeah. if I was a basic writer, I could write two hands up, but I'm not going to. I'm going to finish off the scheme with a punch about how hard it was to write for him and make that a punch. I just think that's really refreshing. Like, you know, you kind of dwell slightly on the fact that there isn't much to say about him. And then, you know, I can still make Stuart little. There's, there's a lot of Stuart wordplay in here, and I'm not sure if, like, that's a really hard bar, but it did catch me off guard because, you know, I think I saw Stuart Little in the cinema as like a yeah. young child or something. And like, I remember that Hugh Laurie was in it, but it's not one of those kind of classic Toy Story films that is just around nah, yeah. now. So I was, was hoping that like, like, a lot of people would get it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. As soon as you hear Mouse come up as well, you're like, yeah. oh, Mouse, Stuart, all right, got yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just before we went on air, we were talking about uh, LimeWire and kind of things that are just facets of our generation. I guess Stuart Little as well is another one of those kind yeah, of probably, Yeah, probably not going to go down as a classic, but no, people who no. know, know, you know I mean yeah. so it's <laughs> yeah. a film if you, if you know the film. mouse you know, you know that <laughs> um and then just yeah you take apart griffin griffin's door um really great um family guy reference where you you talk about um the chicken basically at yeah. griffin's door and you're like i just keep coming back it's like it's probably the most energetic i've seen you on stage actually is that kind of throw like it's quite nice actually the reference and um the delivery you get a huge thing for that we also have your first of i've counted 12 and um if if i'm wrong in my count i'd like you to correct me or for battle rap resume <laughs> at gmail to come in i've counted 12 separate football references um in your oh, si- okay. in, in your six battles um, oh, okay. This is the first one, um, one of the best ones actually. Um, you, you basically, you kind of have what I'm gonna call a little bit of a reach here, where you say Stuart, it's not in him, not Nottingham. Like, yeah, you like, know what? Um, you know what? With that bar, it's funny as well. Um, so not in him, like not in him. Mm-hmm. Probably in my, in my accent, maybe, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Not in him. I'd say not in him. So not in him. Mm-hmm. Kind of, but the the battle right before this happens, like almost every battle the battle before me someone has said something similar to what i say in my battle oh, okay. so the guy before that battle before goes um a try i don't even think this trial got uploaded because it was trash but he said like not not i'm notting him as in talking about something mm. and as not in him and that was just funny that that come up because i'd never <laughs> ever heard that before yeah <laughs> yeah i guess i guess it's a bit of i mean, I mean yeah i mean like <laughs> this is this is this is a podcast of praise you know this is we're not gonna sort of call you out for shit but nah, just, dude, just, go ahead man go just ahead. because i mean the only reason i call it out is because uh i really i really like the follow-up bar uh, Stuart here is not like Stuart Pierce. He can't manage the under twenty ones. And of course, just before mm. that, you kind of you say I'm twenty, and you kind of you kind of build off that, which is really really nice as well. Yeah. Um, Ambi, you know his his technique here. It goes for straight clowning on you, which is fine. Um, yeah. He c- kind of goes for a little surreal wordplay. He goes for like crafty, sound like uh, you know mold yourself penis kit. Yeah, that was penis, brilliant. Yeah. Penis, which was nice. It's kind of like a lot of his verses though. He's kind of having a going out of multi sale. Like, he's just kind of, like, expelling these multis in kind of elaborate ways that don't really yeah, say you know anything. I think he's showing people he can do that now. He doesn't have to do it anymore. That's true, yeah. I mean, he, I doesn't, mean... he doesn't have to. Like, when he just goes for the straight clowning, like, his bars in his third round against Lex, which mm-hmm. were literally just two bar, two bar, two bar with setups, and they were just amazing. Mm-hmm. And I think he can afford to do that because people know what he can do with his with his pen and with his rhyming. Yeah, so yeah, those yeah. kind of bars, like, if he had more of that, he, prob- he could have took that tryout. 
to that battle if he had more of those kind of bars. Yeah, potentially. I don't. I don't know. I think. I think you pretty outclass him here, but I mean, like, that's not that's not to say that he isn't good. And I think he's definitely grown. And look, yeah, we, for sure. You know, we all use crappy multis in our tryouts, like you know. And I'm speaking as a crappy tryout, but it's kind of it's the same <laughs> idea. You know, everyone does that. Everyone has these habits they need to air out and say them live. So we're going to second round. Um, you mentioned you said before apparently Shuffle T's mate. Um, it's interesting you say that actually because I did recently was just watching Shuffle T and Marlow versus uh, Quest McCody and um, Marv Wom. Yeah, uh, the set the standard X set the standard ten. Uh, great event, by the way. Loads yeah, of great battles. Yeah. Looking back, that was a fucking just so many good battles on that event. Um, and uh, you see Ambi in the background of Sh- in yeah, like Shuffle's corner, I which, that as which well. I never which I never noticed before, which was nice to see. Um, he's Shuffle T's mate. You're Harry Baker's mate. Is is there is there you know hypocrisy here or? You know what? It's funny. Um. You could you could really make the argument. I think that's fair enough. And um, I kind of felt like I was coming into the battle with loads of stuff about me, you yeah. know. And there's there's stuff online. I've got pr- online profiles. So with him, like the most distinct thing about him was that he knew Shuffle T. That's what I was trying to get across. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. So yeah, like yeah. with me personally, I spoke to Harry as well about end of my round, and I said like, if he like brings you up or something. Like I'll I'll let you get a little bit of vengeance, you know. We'll mm-hmm. we'll we'll let you do a, a come in and do a bar, and that's what happened. So we kind of freestyled that at the end of the round, which was really cool. He came in with the cue and went, did the ninety percent of that thing, which he'd used against Big J. Yes. So I kind of knew he'd um he might mention Harry. Mm-hmm. So I thought you know what, I'm only gonna make a couple of the obvious jokes so that I can say I didn't come with the angles you come with. Mm-hmm. So I made the the Peter Griffin one and the one right at the start um food and pot whatever that yeah, was. Yeah, so that lots. literally. Yeah did that those two and then ended it with harry coming in so being like i went, when he said it in the first round when he was like what's your mate harry baker you should be having palpitations whatever it was i was like all right i even looked at him and i was like cool we'll, we'll get him back for that <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean it's it's an interesting angle as well it definitely livens up the try a bit shout out to shuffle t as well it's great you know i love love shuffle t he's, yeah same uh, shuffle's he's, brilliant he's, man he's, i mean i want to i want to just say as well i don't want to embarrass shuffle or anything but when i have my tryout I know, I'll stop going on about the tryout, I promise. Uh, when I had my tryout um, in the park, afterwards, everyone was just chilling. I didn't really know many people, you know, you sort of chatting to people. And Shuffle just came up to me and was just really, really, you know, didn't even know me and just, just sort of just said, hey, and we chatted for like 10 minutes. He was really nice. So he's, he's just a real, you know, Yeah, he's a real dude, real approachable, yeah. um, really humble, really nice. Same with Marlo, both of them. They're both yeah, top, just, top dudes. He's just, he's just a, yeah, he's a brilliant guy. Uh, ain't surprising we don't see Moss on the cover. That kind of got slept on, I felt. Um, maybe, yeah, it's maybe one because ones. people don't yeah. refer to Kate Moss as Moss, really. It's but I think of... I think they'd forgotten by that point that his name was Moss. I said it right at the start. Yeah, so like, yeah, Moss, yeah. Why is talking about Moss? Because like, it's his surname, but people might not know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just got to know that. I mean, you know, if, if if he's an established person, you know, everyone everyone knows that Luna's name's Jake, but not yes, everyone knows that, you know, etc. Et yeah. Some some great Stuart wordplay as well, which is kind of a gift. And it's nice that his name hadn't been flipped before and you kind of got first dibs. Because you get some really great Stuart stuff, like the Nottingham stuff in here. Um, taking you out, I'm just making a start, etc. But probably my favourite is the, um, that's a Cromwell, I'm Cromwell, taking off a Stuart's head like the Civil War. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's one of your best history bars, I think. There was Harry... like one comment that caught that. One comment was What's like, oh, big up Crafty for the, <laughs> the bar about history. And, like, and when you like, it didn't really come off that well. <laughs> no, and, like, it didn't. It, uh, like, uh, one got person it. got it, and I was like, yes. You know, um, I think Heretic kind of, maybe hits the nail on the head slightly with your kind of overuse of history bars and i think this is probably <laughs> one of your better history bars because it kind okay. of just fits you know like arguably you could kind of like just you could maybe make an argument for some other bars but i think the cromwell conwell stewart's head it's just kind of you know it, it's very vivid imagery um and then and then again like you were saying you call out the fact that ambi went for ginger jokes you pull harry baker into your bars who decided that 90 percent fat jokes which is pretty funny actually um, What's it? He got he got a few slept on as well. He had no one really heard it. One of the best ginger jokes I've ever heard. He said, "Call me Fanta Pants." I thought that was brilliant, <laughs> and that just didn't yeah. go off. Like no one heard no. it, and I was like, "That was sick." No, but um, Fanta Pants could probably be the nickname of your next opponent. Um, how did how did this battle with Liv come about? Wow, <laughs> when I perform poems, I get the audience respect. When you perform yours. They're always talking through your set. <laughs> so one of your YouTube sets, right? I'm about to tell you this fact. You finished your poem and had to tell them to clap. <laughs> so I live winter. Um, I was I was kind of just in in Italy, man. I was on holiday, chilling, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was kind of thinking, like, literally that day, I want another battle. And then, like, coincidentally, Bam messages me saying, 
right, do you want to battle Liv Winter? And I'd already seen Liv Winter's stuff. Yeah. And I'd had things in mind. I didn't think I'd ever battle her. Um, but I was just thinking, oh, I hate that fucking... Um, using feminism as an angle and using man hating feminism and so as soon as it got and I was like and I because I'm in spoken words and I hear that so so much oh I hear God, like a billion poets like talk about feminism but do it in a way that's like oh yeah like literally the other day there was someone doing a set yeah mm-hmm. in Bristol and she comes up to the stage this is a headline they're getting paid right yeah says opens her set with I'm a feminist that means I don't think there are many good men in the world I'm like, you've literally missed the whole fucking point. So I literally like, no like disrespecting that, but I'd thought that about Liv's stuff as good as other aspects of her writing are that I didn't like. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to battle her and I'm going to use that and it might get no reaction, but I'm going to say it. Well, and so I kind of want, I kind of wanted to take it based you on can that. Tell, you can tell these opinions have been stewed and, and, and debated and thought of. Your first <laughs> comes across as very, there's a lot of just... Um, you know, genuine pathos there. Uh, it's a great first to watch. And like when I watch this battle back, um, which I've seen it quite a lot of times, it's obviously it's got quite infamous almost in a good way, but you do actually absolutely destroy her in this. Like this is such a step up from Ambi and it is absolute demolition of a personality. Um, I'm surprised she battled again. And as we all know, she was absolutely terrible. And yet again, she just repeats people's names. Crafty, J Red. It's just, oh, is that her slogan? I don't know. But anyway, I... um, you know, she's, yeah. She's yeah, she's not very good really, but I don't know. Maybe this is just some sort of weird thing to say, but I always thought this video could go majorly viral. Like if it was like you know how that um just big... like the first round or something, yeah. If yeah, that, you... if it put up on Facebook, something well, you know, like that. Rome versus yeah. Big T. Like yes. that, that that exact like I remember at work, I used to work in some boring digital marketing office in Birmingham and yeah. there was this guy who would always, always play like the viral video and laugh about it and pretend that he discovered it. And I remember one time he was playing out on his iPad and he was playing and I was like, hang on. I can hear King of the Dot. Like, what the hell? And he turned it around. I was like, oh, yeah. And I felt like such a nerd because I was like, have you seen this? I was like, yeah, it's round one of Rome versus Big T from Blackout <laughs> 5. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I was just like, don't look at me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in that regard, maybe, like you're saying, man-hating, hashtag, you know, po- poet beats down, whatever. I don't know. But, I mean, w- we'll get into all the politics of that. But this is a um, really exciting battle. And um, as I discussed with Shocks, actually, it's quite good that you, uh, the Kojay battle was at this event as well. Oh, yeah. Um, which I guess was after your event, just by the virtue of who the, they were. Um, um, so Shocks v Kojay was right after my battle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was. And it, as I said to Shocks as well, it, it's a great shame that this venue isn't reused because the energy is fantastic, like... It's a great shame that certain individuals can't behave themselves properly. That, that's been mentioned again. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, um, there you go though. So uh, it's so, a shame, but yeah, it is a shame. I think it's very important in this battle that you go first as well. Um, I think that that that's kind of sets the precedent really. If 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 Liv was to go first, it would maybe make kind of just your impact a little bit more dull. That's not to say that it can, because obviously you are like razor sharp in this round, but um you start with a line which probably gets a little bit of kind of hmm because obviously she calls herself a bitch and you talk about this white bitch about to get destroyed Mm -hmm. um building off peace soldier lines as well which maybe is a little bit similar to moss it's like did people know that then i know that's like i tell you again exactly the same thing happened every battle so i might even this might be a pattern in this podcast the battle exactly before that was conquer b versus crazy man yeah conquer b starts his battle with the exact same reference to peace soldiers slogan Oh, right. This had never been done before. I was like, oh, cool. I can remix this because it really works what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Like, I can use the word bitch and then go on to say why it's justified in terms of why she used it about herself. And I thought, okay, that's a good setup and it'll get a laugh. But it didn't get a laugh because Conker's got a laugh and he did it right before mine. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, fuck. That makes sense. See, this is is what Battle Rap Resume is for, the context. Because, you know, you don't get get that in the object, you know, just the the YouTube clip that comes up in your subs box, you know. So you kind of just attack her um, for those ideas in just some really nice multi, some just great rhymes that maybe feel a lot um, of spoken word kind of in here. You're the typical type to whinge and cry. The systems die. To pit your life as victimized. But that afflictive life is fictionalized because you strip it, flipped it, flip it, sorry, in the scripts you write. Yeah, um, which is just some nice internal rhyming there. I mean, what is your kind of writing process going forward with Liv? It feels like you had a lot to get off your chest. I mean, was it a case of trimming or how do you, um, how do you construct? Yeah, I overwrite a lot, mm. man. I write so much stuff and then I just kind of pick out, sometimes drop out my best bars, but it's because I want to create narratives in my rounds and yep. like angles and kind of break people down a little bit. So mm. I kind of I kind of do that, man, but I, I write for a while few days depends if i got a lot of time to write i'll write for a couple weeks Mm -hmm. if i don't have as much time something like the press one battle i didn't write as long for as a live battle 
Right. But I put a lot more into live battle, and I felt like the rounds were more polished in, in live winter battle. Yeah. Um, it, I, I stumbled a couple of times in that battle, which is a shame. Otherwise, I think it would have been a really strong performance, like up there with the kind of performances of the year. Because like, I just I, the bars were just going off in that sense, not even mm. an arrogant mm. way. Just like the crowd was on. Oh it. yeah, they are going. But like. Each, yeah. It's obviously it's a shame, but I I I was very ill as well that weekend. Like you can hear my voice in that battle. Like I'm just not. I I turn away to cough a few times, but the camera doesn't pick it up thankfully. But um, yeah, I was a little bit ill, so like I was I was struggling with a sore throat. You are so I was ill, just kind of getting through. I don't, but... I don't, you know, it just in. I think this was good. I don't, I don't. I think you're being a little too critical on yourself. They, they aren't noticeable. Oh, that's cool. I think I think it did like, something. Yeah. I think I'll just I come across as like it was very dry pan because of that. Mm, like more mm. so than usual so yeah it's because yeah, like, i was relaxed with it because i didn't want to like um overheat flame my system. throat up yeah exactly yeah, yeah. You know i mean so um, it kind of actually worked a little bit yeah and you do something that i feel quite strongly about you call live out for i mean um you know equality is obviously very important as well but you can't reuse your spoken word um lines in a in a in a battle yeah, you, just, you, you, you can't do that. <laughs> like, that is so wrong. Not only is that just lazy writing in of itself, but it's disrespecting the piece of work that you've done. That's like, the equivalent of cypher bars, man. People yeah. come in with cypher bars into yeah, the trial. That's it. Like, you didn't write for your opponent, that's your yeah. cypher bars. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Baker's using poetry bars. Like, you know, that could be the... Yeah. But there is that. And, 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 and you sum it up brilliantly. You just say... Um, against Pedro, you use, li- you use lines for a poem. Can't argue with that. Against your opponent, you called him a lazy writer can't argue with that yeah which is just such a just <laughs> mm, a, such a tight little punch i love that i think that's really brilliant and you just kind of you're not only attacking her you're attacking her from all angles very effortlessly which i really like about this first round um you, you talk about yeah like you say wasting all your energy hating on man there's just some great some great little sections as well that gender politics and policies involved you've probably been told no for quality control which is just kind of pulling down all those walls brilliantly. Yeah, and just I kind, kind of feel of, you know, you distill it. I kind of feel like that that kind of came to fruition as well in the fact that she got another big opportunity on the Sunburn card and kind of fucked it. And it was like, mm. and once again, it was a bit like, why did you get that battle? You know what I mean? Yeah. You've had two really bad performances, so Terrible getting on that card, I feel like st- lines like that are like the ones that connect because people are like, okay, yeah, that's probably true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, yeah, there's a lot of that. There is a, there is definitely. If you look back on this in hindsight, after the J Red battle, especially, it, it is pretty eye opening. Um, her versus, well, sorry, her first, you know, she just kind of goes for those real, almost eye rolling. Like you'd say this in, when you're 16, you wouldn't say this in a don't flop rap battle. Uh, <laughs> do you really believe the scene needs another white boy? It's just like, oh, she says, bruv, please, you've got no originality. What? Like, I don't know how you can say that. And she says that um, she's in clicks that are getting paid. She's got 55,000 views on a video. I'm like, wow, is, is that is that a big deal? Like, like you're in a room of Don't Flop MCs as well. You're not in a room of spoken word crowds that might be impressed <laughs> by that. You're in a room of Ur uh versus DNA. You're in a room where Koja and Shocks are there and Sharon and Bullets are there. It's like, yeah. do you expect people to be like, oh, God, well done? Like, you know, she's just asking. The only bar of hers in these three rounds that is good um she says she'd look she uh, she says something along the lines of i bet if i looked in your closet i'd find a lacrosse kit um i just kind of i I thought those those bars were good as well but the only problem with those bars were um i'm not privately educated like yeah i'm not i'm not rich or anything so it it was just like they were obviously pre-written for something else and then just used for me yeah yeah (laughs) that was a little bit weird i don't know where that come from i don't know where the research found like my school like i went to a I went to school in Wimbledon, man, like in mm-hmm. a normal, normal college. Like I didn't go to one my parents paid for or anything like that. So the whole lacrosse thing was, <laughs> it didn't make yeah. any sense. No, I know. So I it know. was a good bar, but yeah, probably yeah, the one yeah. like, oh, you just listened to Eminem and started rapping. That's probably the only true thing she said. But it's just like, maybe <laughs> you could you could throw that lacrosse kit at like a Shuffle and a Marlowe or even a Harry Baker, perhaps. But for yourself, it's just, it, yeah, I agree. It just it Even really Harry, he like... gets that card played. Like Harry's not like, some yeah, yeah, kid. no, yeah. He's yeah. like, he's a little more formally spoken than like rappers, but <laughs> people play that card because it's easy. It, it, yeah, well, that's the thing. That, I'm, that... I'm not even convinced Shuffle and Marlowe are that like rich or anything. No, I no, I mean, I'm not. I don't think they are, but obviously they're well, they're very posh, so that's different. Yes, yes, yes. They're very Alexander Armstrong esque, which which is a good yeah. thing, you know. Um, and yeah, just there's lots of clutter in this round from Liv talking about, uh, you know. She's a grafter, she says. She's not afraid that the time, what the time takes. Mm, 
okay? You're apparently irrelevant and she's a business investment, which doesn't even rhyme, um, which is kind of the bad thing. Um, best newcomer, bitch please, I disagree. Uh, I've just My final note on her ver first verse is just unbelievable. The golfing quality is frightening. And it really is. It is just like, it, I wish she was good in this. You know what I mean? I wish she came fighting back with some brilliant yeah, no, rounds. Me too, me too. It's, it's, it's a wasted opportunity that you came with such intelligent, incisive material. That is quite inflammatory as well. Like, you know, people could battle back against that and that would make really good watching. But unfortunately, she just kind of pegs you as this posh boy for no real reason. And plows that furrow until you know just the thing that the thing that annoyed me more is like about that i don't want to stay on it too long because it's, yeah. it's a long time ago i'm not like so. bitter about it yeah, you know, yeah. i won the battle it's all good but she kind of she could have like rebuttaled or something done something mm. with that she had three rounds to spit after that and got very annoyed after the battle on like online media and stuff because people were really agreeing what i said and i think mm -hmm. it was just hitting home a little bit and we did the press conference thing before sunburn and she'd like yeah, pre-organized yeah. people to come and ask about it so it was supposed to be asking us about our battles, like her battle with J Red, my battle, with, and she'd like put on social media all over it, saying, "Oh my god, oh come, come and ask me, come and ask me why Crafty's an idiot." And it was like, "Why are you still calling me an idiot? Like we battled and I three nilled you, and like you're still going about this." And like Danny Jack, who I'm cool with, you know, what I mean, I didn't know him that well back then, but mm -hmm. he'd obviously been one of the people she pre-organized, and he came to the um, press conference and asked about it, and I was just a bit like. I couldn't really be asked. It's like she can say what she wants. And then the comments absolutely I was actually felt bad. The comments were horrible mm. on that press conference. But I'm like things like that in it. It's just like don't come back at like that, you know like, what I mean? Like, he, like, come Hillary back with Clinton something here, you know I mean? like getting a plant in the audience to ask fake questions. That annoyed me a lot. That's but now in like, the battle itself, like I, I can't think someone would do that. No, that's a bit crazy for me. But like yeah. in terms of her as a battler, okay. I think she's still got something. I think she's got potential and she can write some funny stuff and she's got the kind of delivery that could really clown on someone. I think she just needs to put a lot of effort into it. Mm -hmm. I think she needs to battle someone who would bring the best out of her. Mm -hmm. Which I, I, mean, I don't think like me or J Red are that opponent. No, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think she could do better, and I would like to see her back. But mm. just you know, like you say in your second, you talk about how um, you do a good flip about Bang said the gun. You talk about how she performs in weird hippie ca cafes when no <laughs> one's listening. Uh, you talk about poems. Apparently, people always talking through your set. You finished your poem and had to tell them to clap, um, which is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I just as well. that, again. That was just something I saw on YouTube. Before. Yeah, I mean, that? if you see that, bloody hell, you've got to seize on that. Um, one of your kind of weirder schemes here, you talk about the fact that you're both born on September 11th. Yeah, that was um, weird. Huh? Yeah. You go into a scheme uh, including the lyrics, my lyrics terrorise. Um, you know what about that, though? I um, okay. There was a setup to that. So after I spit that, literally that bar about tell you to clap bar, I remember distinctly, I forgot my whole round. Uh, and yeah. I literally, I did a little bit of freestyling and then got back into a later verse. Mm -hmm. So I skipped like eight bars. Oh, okay. That was setting up a lot. It was setting up about her being a builder. There were a couple of builder jokes. That, yeah, that's so like, the then point. I had to turn to the audience and say, oh, by the way, she's a builder. Because I remember that I didn't spit those bars. Yeah. yeah. Which was like so frustrating. That but that, does... that's kind of why that come across as weird. Otherwise, it was kind of, yeah, yeah I was just okay. trying to get a cold I feel, punch I feel lines, you. A little bit I... of filler. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you see, you say, when the craft clashes, this is a builder's nightmare. And then you instantly say, she's a builder, she's a builder. And it's just kind of like, and you get a bit of laughter. But like, yeah. when, like I think Conker B sort of nails that. Um, we'll get on to his, <laughs> his, his response today. is really funny. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, you talk about, oh, great, great, just great, just little one-liner. Bars for terror, round, for, round three for me, that's margin for error. Um, which is just fantastic. That's oh, something, okay. I, something I wish I'd written off with that. I thought that was really good because <laughs> you're just establishing like I'm bodying you. I'm bodying you three nil in two rounds. Like this is this is so bad. And then you, like you say, win with flips and erase your whole third. Um, a line of yours that was slept on here that I thought was pretty dope. Um, you talking about live live is futile. I'm everything in the kitchen sink to a few tiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is that kind of pulling apart words that kind of. But again, I don't think my projection or... was good in that battle because of my sore throat. So things mm -hmm. like that, I was staring at the floor a lot because I was like uh, trying to get the words out. And so yeah. I, I couldn't go like properly hit the punchline as hard as I would have liked to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I think they still hit as as shown by something oh, that's that happens. Cool, cool. No, no, something something that happens in a few of your battles um, that we'll get onto. Another kind of crafty ramp up kind of trope um, is where you'll kind of just say a bar that hits with the audience, and they just kind of agree with you on a moral level rather than like any <laughs> pun respect. And people will just clap and interrupt you, and you kind of have to get your bars back. Um, this happens in this in the second round against Liv. Uh, also happens against Jay Short and someone else, or maybe Conquer as well. I think, but yeah, definitely against one. Jay Short. Yeah, and. Um, 
you just you basically they clap and then you come back in with this brilliant brilliant closer what i've always liked about the way that you end your verses you end your verses almost like essays or how you're taught to write essays at uni you know <laughs> an, an essay at uni you're taught not to not to just sum up what you've said in the argument but to offer a new argument which is created for all the learning within the essay to point something out so that's exactly right. what you do at the end of like the second that. verse you say some are doing it for bars others doing it for laughs i'm just doing it to prove that in that, that in this you're just two minutes to pass you'll try out in camden a bunch a bunch of drunk 16s that was too easy to go now you've got a room of hungover mcs let's see what you've got um, yeah, yeah. which again really grounds it similar to the live getting second chance thing it really you not only notice the certain bleary eyes of the crowd and you probably if you're a fan you know this was like the day after checkpoint or whatever but it just puts things into clarity just before she does her second verse now so you're reminding people that you know you're here to be entertained you're not just going to laugh through some pedro insults about weed or something like you have to actually be impressed um and then i haven't even written anything on her next round to be honest i thought it was terrible um so we get into your next football bar you're only known for your misses in chelsea like fernando torres oh yeah misses made in chelsea like fernando mm. torres yeah, mm. yeah yeah really really that pop man i was happy that pops that got... yeah arc um there's there's a weird there's a weird habit in don't flop battles where if there's a big bar they'll just cut to arc like keeling over in laughter yeah but it's because it happens... archaic's like well yeah he's a big okay but guy, he's, he's also yeah. really smart like not yeah. saying my bar was sick and needed like someone smart <laughs> to, like but he's he's always like in the tony d versus shiller jones battle tony d does the bar about um so i sparked to benson and started reflecting that's mm-hmm. when i clocked you all smoking mirrors and he was about to start his next bar then archaic interrupts like what the fuck and then yeah. everyone kind of gets it yeah yeah and that yeah. kind of happened in my second round against live where i did the um the the bar you mentioned earlier mm-hmm. where i go you can either win the flip and make me go first or i'll win with flips and make and erase your whole third and he he interrupted that on his own and then other people kind of joined in mm-hmm. so archaic's like i think that's just why they they like flip to him a lot because he's oh, yeah, just very I mean, receptive and he knows his shit if, if anyone if anyone knows archaic's um uh, come dine with me bar it's one of the best bars I've ever been spat on Don't Flop. I mean, seek it out. It's against Soul. We mentioned it in the Shocks battle. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. genuinely one of the, like, it's it's a little silly in terms of its wordplay, but it really makes me laugh whenever I think about it. It's just a brilliant, brilliant bar. Arquette probably had one of my favourite bars of the entire year yeah. against um, Tally, where he says, um, he's talking about that battle, and he says, for God's sake, not even Soul knew outer body experience. Mm, mm. I just thought that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was. But he's, that he does, he's got clever shit like that, man. Yeah, he's he's that very, props very Ark, man. For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro- yeah, seriously, Mister Ark. If you want to get on the uh, battle rap resume, although there is a list now, I must stress, we've got quite a lot of people coming on, so this is pretty exciting. But um, we'd love to have you on Ark. Huge, huge, huge fan. So yeah, we'll just just wrap up your final um, third because it's pretty much over. There's a bar actually I wanted to ask you about because I think I, I think I understand this bar, but I don't know if I do or not. So you say, um, let me finish off the essay. Like when you check the word count, different type of title, like the word count. Yeah. You, Again, talking... that was that, that was a little filler set up, but it's just more on the fact that using count as a title for a name. Yeah, like, so like it's, a, it's a really rare type of title. Yeah. Um, that no one really has, but uh, um, it's just a different, isn't it? It's just a bit different to Mister and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Sir and that kind of thing. So yeah. it's like, oh, a different type of title. Oh, me being the best newcomer, that's a different kind of title, like the word count, mm-hmm. and it just kind of fed into what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah, no, I loved it. I just wanted to double check that, that it was that. But yeah, that's what yeah, I thought that was as well. <laughs> and uh, no, it's a do- that, that's one of those bars that is really like, unless you're watching them for a podcast, you're probably not going to be like, hang on, what was, you know, you just kind of move on from it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then you do kind of what you're very good at, really, where it's just, you know, you can do this sort of flourishy, delicate wordplay stuff. And then you can just come at live and just say, they're supposed to be insults, not retel- rhetorical questions, <laughs> which is just perfect, really, because that's how she feels. You feel like you're being spoken down to when you listen to a live winter verse. You don't feel like you're on board with something. You can't wait to hear the second and third. Um, and then and then after your insult, uh, after your imp- impersonation, sorry, of live, which is something that you seem to do most battles. What What is that? What is it in Crafty that makes you want to do an impersonation pretty much every battle? Uh, I'm just insecure in my own skin, so I want to be other people. <laughs> yeah. No, basically, um, honesty. I don't know. I just like it. it. Just I get the kind of opponents as well mm. that it just tailors to. Like, like for example, Am- Ambi is someone you could do an impression of if you know what he sounded like before the battle. Maybe yeah. um, Locksmith did a really good impression of Ambi. Um, Press one wasn't really, but Con could be Jay Short. Live Winter, they're just very, very easy to do impressions of. They so are. it's just, and like the first one went off, the one against Liv just went mm. off. I didn't think mm. it would. I didn't think yeah, it would. Yeah, it went huge. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I can make this a thing. And so I just kind of done it since then. So the Jay Short one 
wasn't the best impression, but like the kind of way it was worded, and then the Conquer B one just went off. So I just kind of just taken it from the Live one, man. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be something we see again in the future. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it is really good. And then what I liked best was it wasn't just like you did an impersonation and moved on. You then end it with wait. That parody was nice because it was actually in rhyme. So it's like your yeah. impersonation of Liv is not only spot on with a voice, you make her a better writer as well, uh, which is... Uh, it's like That's the I, kind of levels of disrespect. I'll yeah, it's like, I can do you better. <laughs> like, I'm a better version of you and me. Um, and then build on the fact that she kind of tends to go quite long on battles. You go over the 90s with extra time. There's always going to be penalties to pay, which I don't class as a crafty football bar. A crafty football bar names the footballer. Um, so I kind of, you know, Fernando Torres works. I don't know if 90s over the penalty, but, you know, we could put it in the maybes maybe. But, I mean, you wrap that up. How, after that, did you feel that you had a little bit of a name in Don't Flop? Because, I mean, that certainly for me, um, I kind of, like, I, we'll talk about when I fought. I, I discovered you at the Press 1 battle as, as a listener and a fan. But, I mean, like, was that, did you feel different after that? Did you feel you had more opportunity or? It was weird, man. Like, the first... After the first battle, I had to kind of feel like, oh, thank God it's kind of done, won mm. it, it's over. After that battle, like, it was just really nice because it wasn't, there wasn't loads of people in the venue. It was an invite-only event, so it wasn't like, it was all like, everyone there was kind of that really hardcore fans and everyone yeah. kind of come up to you straight after the battle and I spoke to a lot of people straight away who were just like, great battle, great battle, great battle, great battle, everyone mm. on and on. And so like, I felt like, oh shit, I really nailed, I really nailed that one. Like, I was really happy with it. And I just kind of felt like, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm not, I try not to like get ahead of myself and stuff and that that kind of front. So I just thought, okay, whoever they offer me next, I'll just kind of come at it again. Press one, I, I just that come out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just took that one anyway, but. You left battling to pursue music, but there's no escape from the pain. Try to capitalize and made a lower case for your name. Blood sucked the industry <laughs> for a taste of the fame. There's vampires back from the dead. Now I'm staking a claim, you're as plain as it gets. Mm. Don't flop needs some stronger flavors. It's not a close shave. I'm the simple solution like Occam's razor. Um, and he's obviously, a. a old school head and big in the music game and like you know that was real that was real honor to get offered him actually yeah yeah exactly i, I want to get onto that because i was there at the actual event itself um right. you, can, you, you can, trying out at that event i was trying out you mm. can uh, you can spot me in the back if you go back and listen to this battle rap resume you can definitely see me with the sunglasses amazing weather that day as well wasn't it it was like the best day for battles yeah but was. not not for a, a pale ginger guy unfortunately. potentially not potentially not but nah. for uh for us for a swarthy man like myself it was yeah. uh, it was it was You're right brilliant there, yeah. brilliant conditions um but uh <laughs> but yeah so Obviously, I was on the card, and there was loads of triads on the card. And I remember getting sort of the invite through Facebook or whatever, and looking down and sort of knowing most of the names. I remember I didn't even know who Danny Jack was back then, um, okay. so it was, you know, it's kind of a little bit more ignorant back then. Um, and I was going through it and stuff like that, and I'd recognised your name. I think I'd seen your name on Twitter or something, but I'd never heard of Press One. And I was a bit like, why is he facing Crafty? He just battled Live Winter, or <laughs> what? You know, I didn't really understand. I was like, he's just giving this chance to someone, blah blah. So I went into Verse Tracker, and as you were saying, Crafty is someone that has battled, you know. Since the very early, early days, I don't know if he was on Urtube, but he was on some of the earliest days. Oh, of so that's press, yeah, press, press battled, is, you know, long, yeah. I think oh nine. He was also on the original Jump Off, man. Oh, was he? Yeah, oh, wow, so like, okay, there's some yeah. Jump Off videos. Of him um, it's pretty cool, actually. Freestyles. I've uh, I've spoken to Press a little bit, and um, he is going to be on this show as well. He's going to be on a future episode, which is really exciting because I uh, really rate his writing. Actually, I think he's yeah, um, a and really he's good... such a cool guy as well. Press, yeah, a lot his, of time for him. His, his flow is flow is brilliant as well. Yeah. Um but uh, yeah, he Press battled like Skinny Man as well, like you know, incredible Skinny Man, uh, Kruger, Verb T. He's had yeah. loads of battles back in the day. So this. Like you say, it must have been a great honour, as it were, because he definitely had some, you know, allure behind him. I mean, at the moment, if you want to kind of date this episode, just recently, Tenshu's been announced um, for his return to Checkpoint. Um, yeah. His his That's video, crazy. by the way, that drops video, apps, one of some of the best rapping I've seen on Don't uh, Flop for it's fantastic, so man. long. His, his drops and his show off from back in the day, like you, when Tenshu speaks, you you fucking listen, man. If you're a battle rap fan, <laughs> that guy is like that's like a gospel reading of battle rap. If he's talking about the scene, you listen. If he's complaining about the scene, you agree. <laughs> yeah, that, that's straight up. <laughs> no, that's true. He is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable, that video. Definitely check it out. So that was a big one. And obviously, Press One wasn't coming with that sort of pathos. But people knew who he was. And this was exciting. And, like, he's a battler battler. You know what I mean? Back when Don't Flop was rapping. And, like, he oh, definitely yeah, has that going about him. And, you know, this... This, I mean, coming up to this clash, I mean, how were you feeling? Were you, were you nervous? I mean, you know, you'd watch his past battles or... You know what? <coughs> I felt like... It would all depend on how much he evolved his style because he was rapping back in the days of a lot of freestyling, one-liners, 60-second rounds. So it's just like, mm. I'm going to come with the narrative style I usually come with and try to do a breakdown. So can he match that? 
um, I felt his first was a little light and when I actually got there in the day and I was thinking, oh shit, you know, okay, he's not developed. Mm-hmm. And then his second was fucking amazing and it was mm-hmm. just like, I didn't even, straight after the battle, I didn't even know which way I was going to go. I thought that was a great battle but I actually going into it, I just didn't know, man. I was speaking to my friends about it and I was like, oh, what, how you think you're going to do? And I was like, I generally don't know. I'll probably lose. <laughs> But it's exciting, though. I mean, not many recent tryouts or newcomers to the league get a chance to battle an old vet. Yeah, you know, that, that was that, real nice. Don't flop was showing a lot of faith in you, mm. um, which was you know really good of them as well. And I think they were smart to set up this clash because it is a great clash. Um, his first round, yeah, it's not. It's interesting. Like, it's it's it's, it's it, rhythmically, it's very very strong. I think content wise, yeah, maybe the second and third are a bit stronger. Um, but he just has this nice. He has lots of nice references to the early days of Don't Flop that, as a fan, are just really interesting. So yeah. he says like, "I haven't done this since Don't Flop gave out free food at events." Yeah. And then he talks about no show into his clash with Tony. Oh, I wish that went down back in the day. That would have been brilliant. Um, and, I mean, and getting in a fight. He talks yeah, about getting that. in a fight. So um, not many people know that there's, there's an infamous fight scene during Big Cannon and Verse Tenchu. Mm-hmm. Infamous fight scene where they cut the, it cuts out and then comes back to the battle and that yes. was press one and lens one getting in a fight. Jeez, camouflage children, interesting well, fact there. That is, thank you, Craft. That is a great. <laughs> that is a great tip. Actually, I need to check that out. Um, yeah, I need to check out Tenju versus Big Cannon again. I've watched that for years. I, I love both. Yeah. Of them. So um, that, that, that was a great clash. But um, yeah, so we get into yours. You have really, really funny. I think this is definitely one of your best battles. Actually, I have to say. Okay, and, that's good uh, to hear. Really, I, I really strong. That. <laughs> um, as I was saying, I saw this live and I was just taken aback. Really, I'd never seen you perform before. I'd seen you like videos and stuff, but um, yeah, I had a really good spot sending back, and it was a really good vibe for the battle. The, the weather was brilliant. Everyone was there, really enjoying themselves, drinking and stuff. And yeah. I was just taken aback, really, by the 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 quality of the writing um i actually posted this online recently as a little kind of taster of the episode we're going to do but um i love your kind of summary of press one and kind of why he's gone from the scene and not only do you provide great exposition for fans who might not even know who he is let alone that he was in don't flop but you make references to things that everyone can agree with and it makes the story a lot more tangible so you say to him don't front like you left for fame and caliber you were fading you're a failing battler a fading amateur you saw the lunars and the gris and had to obey the challenger could have went on to perform in usa and canada but switched to music to find something safe a manager but really you realize you just ain't the challenger you recognize you didn't have the frame and stamina so you left get the game to have a change of character like jamie carragher took a downhill slide from the same parameter you ain't my caliber i'll outrate a rapper you the prey and massacre that's the natural order just ask david attenborough just about that, yeah. <laughs> Just about that. And yeah. then at the end, you can barely... You go, David, you can barely even get your word oh, out. Like, man, it's great, that was, man. Yeah, bro. It's, that is such a mouthful even to just read that now is just like but to do it in front of a crowd <laughs> is crazy and um, just before that as well you just do some really funny stuff calling out press for not battling you know you haven't had a battle since my exams in year 10 yeah uh, see that that was again that was one of those things where like I literally that, that was a parody of Souls bars against C Major yeah of course yeah <clears throat> and like <clears throat> it was nice that that went off because I wasn't sure it would mm-hmm. either come across as a little weird and beggy or come across as oh that's a funny reference yeah, so yeah. Good that it went the latter. No, it was. It was a really funny reference because you just fleshed it out with um, a lot of interesting details. Again, uh, we just add Jamie Carragher there uh, to the footballer mentions, and then you do another one quick after. You look like Olivier Giroud's been living in a zoo. Um, yeah, I think I think in the same way, uh, in the same way that uh, Tolkien Tolkien wrote some essay years ago about the word cellar door, as in the door to a cellar, being the yeah. loveliest word in the English language, just in terms of its phonic, its sonic qualities. Uh, yeah. And later, there's actually quite a famous TV company called Cellar Door, which are named after that. But I would I would argue that the second best word in the English language is Olivier Giroud. It's one Olivier of the Giroud. nicest uh, footballer yeah. names ever. Like it's just a it just especially if you're French you're like yeah Olivier Giroud. exactly it's exactly and it, like yeah. you know I mean the press uh, Olivier Giroud physical comparison I can, yeah I can see it but um I think there are better bars there you kind of build quickly off this idea of disheveledness and being in a zoo and chained up and you say this is not a close shave on the simple solution like Occam's razor um yeah. which is you hear Bagnall kind of mm, and that is one of those kind of like oh I know what Occam's razor is and this kind of sums it up obviously <laughs> Occam's razor is the simple solution is it not that's kind of what it is isn't yeah. it it's kind of the philosophical idea that basically the most obvious thing probably is the thing um, yeah that sort real. of thing you know um and then just lots of great press name flips as well um earlier you said uh, ironic we're just seeing press play we're seeing press play just to rewind his career which is nice yeah. but the, the two that close it are brilliant um i'll leave this persian needing surgeons beeping an oscillator meaning if i hit press one you'll be speaking to the operator yeah that's probably the better so one good. actually yeah so good and wow. i actually like killing off press that's charlie hebdo 
Yeah, I mean, that was just a round wasn't it? That that so that, that was, was but that was a real. You could hear people going, "Ooh, hard hit there." But it, it was hard hitting. That was cool, man. It was cool that that went off and that. Yeah, yeah. I think the whole just reading it out now, you can see that the round is absolute quality. I think the first against Press One is one of your best rounds. I'd have oh, to cool, say, cool. up there with the second against Jay Short. Um, it's just okay. a real, like, just you know, um, great exhibition of of what you can do. Press has some um, press has some funny shit. In oh, his second, second round was so funny. Uh, pockets for my jeans. I got holsters for my fists. Yeah, he's, he's got that, that great. Was hard. I love press. Just just the way he flows. You know what I mean? That kind of like I don't. You don't want to use throwback and backpack and all these kind of useless words to describe the way he is. But it is just old school and it's really enjoyable. And I think but he's relaxed, man. But he's he's so like his his personality is is naturally attacking. Like when he when he raps and like you feel like a dickhead. Even in the first round, where he's like. Just like um, your heavy bars are in the setup. That's not how you do it, dickhead. <laughs> and I just stand there looking like that, feeling like an idiot. No, the like, way he delivers that, that bar. Demeanor. That's not yeah. how you do it, dickhead. It's he's just, so good, man. It's perfect. And um, you call out camouflage children at the start of your second. Um, yeah. Check them out in the ten shoe big cannon battles. We now know. Um, you rely on music as well, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're relying on contacts without lens. You'd be losing sight. I mean, we've kind of had like millions of vice scene, eye clear, contact lens drop stuff, but you know. It's it's there and and obviously again yeah. lens people know it now because they battled uh, Sleepy G and Danny Jack didn't yeah they? yeah um, so people are more and then we have more football references um, we have a Mario Balotelli reference even when the team's performing you'll still see a bad press yeah uh, which is was, quite yeah. nice cut through his defense like a Pirlo pass I felt like you wanted that bar more than it should have been there probably man it just rhymed yeah. with what I was <laughs> I was I was saying and I was it's... like mm, what rhymes with this this is Pirlo pass Yep. Oh, yeah, I can cut through his... Yeah, yep. I'm going to yep. say that. Yeah, yep. Maybe, you know. Is well, that, that, again, I didn't edit that battle as much as I edited other ones, mm-hmm. so like I kind of just throw everything in there. Yeah, I think just the nature of that battle as well, it was outdoor, everyone was having enjoyment on plane, as it were, so it just added to that kind of ease. And it was a really yeah. good bar. That's not to diminish from the bar. It's a great bar. And then, <laughs> um, fantastic ending to the second as well. Break your story down into parts. That's a trilogy, because you did start ambitiously, then you'll path track physically. That's a fast activity. I'll tear apart that instantly. You battled in the underground. You're in the jungle now. You're a tiny plant, that little seed. You're like Nigel Farage. You can try, but you can't branch that bigotry. Yeah. Um, and I feel that there is that aspect in your writing with where you push towards the more poetic image. So you say, you battled in the underground. You're in the jungle now. You're a tiny, pl- you're a tiny plant, that little seed. I just love that pull. So it's the mental image of the kind of fast jungle and then pulling it down to one single plant. And um, it just works on no, a visual cool. aspect. I, I try to do that stuff yeah. more, but then like, obviously it's not the kind of stuff that goes down on the day. So I kind of, I edit that kind of stuff out more, mm-hmm. but I try to keep them in. Like I, I use the same image because I, I wanted to <clears throat> make some cross cross references in my battles as well, really. For, you know, people like yourself who, who do, you know, really listen and really take mm-hmm. it in. So I carried it on to the start of my J short battle where I felt, okay, I'm going to continue that and did a thing about plant and then it goes into a tree and have a scheme on it and then the apple fall in it and just to do with the son father stuff, I was doing that battle. So I like, I thought, okay, once I'd done that, I could keep using that um, scheme on seeds and plants and trees and then hopefully one person will pick up on it and make it worth it. <laughs> what so that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, then just, just as a little taster as well, like you were saying, in your J short battle, you have something similar in that kind of bucolic um, naturalistic imagery carving a niche enhancing the league farming a garden and planting a seed um, which is nice as well yeah. but just as we close out uh, into your third um, you just have a really funny little uh, section on how press one is obsessed with defeat bars oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. which he got really annoyed about that as well <laughs> which I liked <laughs> um, and he's like apparently he did some bar about the floor you're like I've heard defeat bars before but you did a defloor bar yeah and um, and then and then you were talking about apparently press one is some sort of chef or something and you were like well that's um, the thing mate um, that's another one of those weird things that I come across and the se- end of my second round mm-hmm. I have a that bar hits the branch that bigotry bar I go to take a drink and press start spitting and I hadn't finished my round. So my, my last eight bars in my second round oh. were about him being a chef. Oh, okay. So like when I come to the bit like, um, that's why you, at work you like serving egg and chicken wet so you can see death eat. And it's like, yeah, if people knew he was a chef, that would have hit harder. But I, I, I think it hits. I think it hits still. I think it's it hits. just about enough. I, expect, it, I wanted more laughter from that, that bit. Yeah. But like, that's all good. Man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you were saying, um, so he's a chef. At work, you like serving egg and chicken to definition so you can see, see death, death eat. eat. Yeah, that was which just is, uh, messing about. Dot! Yeah. That reminded me of like a dot bar or something. But it was uh, <laughs> it was good though. I like dot. 
Um, you looked like you were born in a kebab shop. Yeah, now, that was cheap, but it was, it it was, was cheap. funny. I mean, how... Obviously, you know, this isn't any moralistic judgment or anything. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck, basically. You know, call yeah. people what you want. But I mean... It, were you aware of any sort of like I've been such a preacher with not preacher but you know what I mean like with Liv I've kind of like trying to broken her down for not being and not kind of calling people names and using stereotypes and there you are using it or you don't see those as you know now nah, you know what I think like and obviously in my, my very recent battle someone obviously tries to use the angle of and course, play, the, yep. play the moral card on me and I, I don't think it is man I think like it's battle rap at the end of the day you got you got to tap people for what you're looking at and mm-hmm. The stereotypes, like he's he's attacking me for ginger and the stereotypes that come with that, and I'm gonna be like, right, I'm a you're you know from a certain place. I'm gonna yeah. talk about stereotypes of that place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just a bit of fun. If I said if it was I'm a, I'm half Italian myself, but say I was battling an Italian person, I'd be like, oh, you like you were born in a pizza restaurant. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. obviously there's a little more um there's some more negative connotations in society which you gotta be careful about with um certain religions. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I felt like I felt like I did it you know in, in, in the right kind of way I was watching his battle with Kruger and Kruger just talked about kebab shops and I was like yeah I might I might, I might do something on that <laughs> yeah 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 um, check out that Press 1 Kruger battle by the way because there's a good bit when Press 1 calls out Earth for laughing too loud at Kruger's jokes yeah and uh, that, I've never seen that happen before in a battle and it was you could tell people would be like fuck and I, I was like oh that's cool I was like I'm glad he did that so um, and then just to finish off probably your best bar of the battle I think I remember tweeting you this after the battle and you like corrected me because I like pronounced the bar wrong oh. so Oh, so uh, I'm such a prick, no, no, so no! Like I'm, that. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a prick, man. Um, well, no, I don't want to say I'm a prick, but uh, so yeah. When I um, your bar was when I shift press one, there'll be exclamations. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is absolutely like obviously if you press shift and one, you get exclamation points on your keyboard. But it's just a fantastic, like really clever, like you're using press one as just part of the kind of punch and. Um, Think about that as well, though. It's like I was trying to get across that. I had a bar just before that. Um, the, the, it was when I hit Defcon. It's devastation. I can't remember now. When I mm. hit Defcon, this is devastation. So when I shift press one, there'll be exclamation. So like using the Defcon thing, mm-hmm. and it being an exclamation because it's a serious situation. And I think Defcon one, if I'm right, remembering this is like the the big one. Yes. Yeah. So then def, using the Defcon, then saying when I press one, then that's the the worst. Oh. So I'm kind of trying to make that link as well. As well as the keyboard, or was that the main? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that was just okay. kind of oh, linking back to DefCon. Oh, this is That's... DefCon one, so now there will be exclamations. But... That is that is vague. I, I respect a man to write a bar like that, but that is that is very vague. <laughs> they don't they don't get like, reactions on the no, day, man, but you no. know, there's, there's two what... audiences. You got an online audience as well. That's so true. Good. That's, That's what Bar at Resumes here for as well for, for <laughs> DefCon bars. So your next opponent, um, and I will say I think this is probably your best free rounds. Um, yeah, me too. Jay Short. When you start every freestyle rebuttal with, I'm coming in with the freestyling shit. <laughs> you know your freestyling shit. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, I'm just messing. Real talk, when it comes to flips, you produce some of the best around, but then how many times have you rebuttaled and struggled to get a sentence out? How many times have you mumbled and stumbled when you end around? This motherfucker will probably try to rebuttal his wedding vows and mean if he put this shit on. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Like I have to say that straight out. Brilliant. Love this battle. What watch this battle a lot anyway, even before I was doing the research, I just think it's a really good performance. Um but with Jay Short, obviously you're not facing Jay Short in the same way you would face the same Jay Short maybe a year and a half ago. No, like arguably this not. Jay Short has had a massive like jump in his career. I remember um back when I was a student at Liverpool, we went to this um a don't flop event in Liverpool, which had a good card actually. It was in a really weird place though. Normally the Liverpool events are at the Casimir, if anyone knows Liverpool. Really nice little club bar venue. Loads of great bands have played there. Unfortunately that's closed down now so I don't know where Liverpool are gonna go on Don't Flop. I hope they do um, more stuff there soon. But basically we went to where where it wasn't the Casimir it was like this kind of big open air kind of like it was it was it was a room but with a huge ceiling and a stage almost like a kind of dance hall um in central liverpool um watch crafty sorry not crafty watch uh, j90 versus j short that was the battle that i caught there it was the first time i saw j short and you'll see how weird the room is um other battles there were if i think off the top of my head uh, innuendo versus euphorical marlo versus most prob yeah that was a rubbish battle and yeah i'm a big fan of both of them and that was just a rubbish battle terrible battle yeah um shuffle t versus ricky riley not a bad battle actually shuffle t writes some really good material in that but it's one of his least viewed battles purely because it's kind of hard to watch the sounds very boomy um also from that battle was um also from that clash was i think it was o'shea versus blizzard which is a last minute thing was that 24 i was speaking to brad about this recently yeah, he was yeah, talking yeah. about the, that that 24 hour battle <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. and how hard it was yeah that was yeah, yeah, yeah fair was... play to both of them man 24 hours preps oh my god yeah 
yeah, I mean, yeah, just. It, but it, and I think Blizzard like crowd surfs at the end or something. I need to rewatch it. I was there, and I yeah, think I, I think I held him crowd surf. But I can't remember anymore. It was a long time ago. But anyway, that was the first <laughs> time I saw Jay Short, and I remember being like, "There, like this is." And it's on the demo channels that battle, by the way. So it's not even on Don't Flop Extra. It's not a very good battle. He wasn't very good. The Lunar Clone um, observations that you make in your battle, quite rightly so, were there, and I remember seeing them and being a bit like, oh, "Okay, so this is another mm. one of those sort of thing." But you know, since then. It is not to take anything away from Jay Short that he's had a huge renaissance, really. You know, I'm thinking after Villain, uh, you have the two and two of O'Shea as well. Freestyling yep. is became his kind of main arsenal now. Oh, for, um, for sure, man. Yeah. Serious freestyler. So, so good. Battle Dots. Um, he also battled, I don't know if this was before your battle. It might have just been before your battle, actually. It was at a Trading Days event in which I battled 142 at. And the main battle on that card was uh, Yunnan versus Jay Short. And it eventually went to the park. Um, that because... was a. I think that was two weeks before I battled Jay. Oh, okay. Okay. So our yeah. battle was confirmed, but he was doing that battle then. Oh, right. Interesting. Well, yeah. So, so you were there then? Um, I was at the event. I yeah. had to leave early because I had to catch a train. But I, because the event overran, as you said, it went to the yeah. park because it yeah, overran. Yeah. So I didn't actually catch that battle. But, yeah. That, um, I, I had some some um, what what's the word? I had some eyes in the crowd. Oh. Came back to me. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> Cosa Nostra. Um, so, yeah, we basically, when I watched that battle, I was really not only disappointed in Yunnan, I don't think Yunnan was very good in that battle, and they did edit out quite a long joke that he did, which is a bit... You can tell that they've edited out because it just fades out and fades mm-hmm. back in, but it's longer than you think as well. Soweto Kinch references it in the next battle, and you can actually hear Yunnan go, ha-ha, like at the back as he was walking away. I remember seeing him walking out the crowd, but... These are just minor details anyway. But I remember watching that battle and thinking, God, Jay Short, like, this guy's seriously good. Like, you know, his freestyle ability is really impressive. Um, I mentioned on the Shocks battle, I don't like the way that he looks at his opponent through the rounds. Um, I find it very distracting, (laughs) both as, I can't imagine as a battler, but just as a viewer, um, I find it distracting on this battle. I also found it distracting when I was watching him versus Yunnan. And I know it's a battle rap blogger whinging about how he found someone distracting. I know how, you know, lame this sounds or whatever, but it is distracting for that. But anyway, Jay Short, serious opponent so how did this come about i mean did he want it did you ask like no i to be honest i hadn't i haven't ever asked for a battle so far i'm not saying i, I probably will ask to certain people but i've just took who i've been offered and i was offered for that event sunburn they were trying to get me on the card they wanted to give me a bigger battle mm. and they they were going to set up me versus adam the rapper okay um and they they'd made they'd passed both and we were t- talking on facebook and I already knew, I knew, I know Adam personally, I know his policy is he does not battle other poets or people he knows, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like, he battled most prob, and since then he said, I'm never battling. He ref- he turned down Harry Baker a couple of years ago. Um, so Adam does, so I knew that wouldn't happen. So I was like, okay, everyone's getting excited. I saw a viewpoint post about it from Erg, like 100 likes, but I was like, it's not, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of a bit disappointed. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to get on the card. And then literally last minute, was like the last one to be confirmed was me, Jay Short, and they offered me, Jay and thankfully on his part he was happy to give a new guy a kind of yeah. kind of a shot um and so yeah we both we both got on the card and just went down like that and I think you know I think and as you say my, I think it was my best performance even if not I've had stronger writing my performance in that was my best so mm-hmm. far and I think it was one of the better battles from the sunburn card man if I'm honest yeah yeah I agree I think stuff like uh Raptor Tony D was really really good as well yeah exactly uh, Wizard Og I'm trying to think of some yeah. of the other ones off the top of my head. I think um, that me and Jay Short might be like fifth or sixth. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You're de- yeah. De- definitely up there. Definitely up there. Because mm-hmm. um, that Shuffle Yunnan was on that card as well. Shuffle Yunnan, yeah, as well. Um, it was it was a really strong card. But yeah, this is a great battle. I think also this is a great battle. The atmosphere is awesome in this battle. The crowd are really up for it. Um, you know, everyone's really vibing off it. I think it was probably, I imagine it was quite early in the day as well. Like it was So it was straight after Live J Red. Okay, yes. Yeah, so. No, it was Live J Red, then there was an on beat battle between P Soldier and Brucey, mm-hmm. then it was our battle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you start this battle against Jay Short, which it, it's a really exciting matchup, but on paper as well, I think you're quite well even. Like, obviously, you're more of the writing guy, he's more of the freestyling guy, but you both yeah. embody certain characteristics um, that are similar. So you go into a flip straight away, which kind of felt like me, okay, he's kind of marking his territory here. He's like, you can flip, I can flip. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think your, flip, your flips are really good, actually. Like, is this just something that was nurtured through those early years of rap or yeah possibly man. i just I've, I've i like people who freestyle so i tried to do it a little bit myself i haven't in the last couple battles um well i, I did one against my heritage but it wasn't it wasn't great um i, I want to do more of that in the future but in that one i've just thought i just felt i i thought of that flip i kind of he said it right at the start about what he was talking about and i thought i constructed a flip in my mind i thought i'll say this and if it pops then 
yeah, as you say, like point proven, I can do it too. Mm-hmm. And it kind of took the pressure off the rest of the battle. I thought, okay, I'm not going to flip for the rest of the battle. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to remember my round. So yeah, I was, I was really happy with that. Yeah, the flip gets a huge reaction um, about Tinder app. Um, yeah. You know, people really, really respond, which is really good. The atmosphere is awesome. Surgeon, surgeon, kind of wordplay. You look like the outcome of a surgeon giving Liv Winter treatment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um so and, and yeah you call out because like i don't know if we're in the same boat but i do hate shit tattoos and you call out jay short shitty tattoos and you basically <laughs> say i thought that live winter had shit tattoos then i saw yours and yeah. for, throughout these opening lines you're building on the sense of similarity that you know on viewpoint on twitter everyone's oh they're both ginger blah 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 mirror match yeah. all this kind of crap you know and you, you build on that you talk you, you you compare yourselves to brothers and you have this nice corporeal scheme about a faceless body when i call this man akin um, yeah brilliant scheme of physicality that launches right into a kind of attack on jay short's ego which he doesn't need to be attacked on and you attack him brilliantly um you say you're like every other prick at the gym who looks the part and acts so great too concerned about your rep because the bars don't carry weight right yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, i mean you must have been proud of that bar that is a really strong bar <laughs> like, it's just... um you know what it, it was um yeah i just i just trying to think of something that was relevant to what mm-hmm. i was trying to say and i kind of just come up with that i was like um how can i he oh he likes his rep. What can I do? Oh, the word rep. I can do something with that, and it just come come off that. Yeah. So I mean, w- do you have bars that you've got stored like on your computer or in notebooks? Or no, you I don't. I don't. I don't do that stuff. Man. I don't like it. I don't like um, battlers who come with the best mum joke they've been writing for three months. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I I always write for what I'm doing. If it's a poem or a piece of music or a battle, I'll write for that battle. Yeah. Uh, it might be one or two things I've got written somewhere that just happen to be relevant to that. But that one, I wasn't aiming to use for anything battles or but it was just like a nice piece of wordplay. But no, that that J Short battle in particular, I wrote for J Short. Mm, mm. Yeah, I mean, you can tell as well because in the same way, we, I mean, we keep bringing up the essay mechanics here, but in the same way, in, in essays, you're told to like make a new point every every paragraph. You are doing that. You're pretty much starting off attacking your similarities and saying, well, we're not actually that similar, really. I'm better than him in every way. <laughs> Um, I'm bringing in a new ton. This apple's falling far from the tree. I don't know if I hate that or love that. It, it's kind <laughs> of like <laughs> a new ton. It's like, yeah, but do people say I'm bringing in a, like a ton? Like, no, I, you I, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's it's not, I think you can do it a bit in bars. I think sometimes yeah. you can, oh, yeah, yeah, you, course, you reach yeah. a bit as well, but you gotta reach. in terms of the rep and the bars thing, and it was like, oh cool, you're concerned, you've got these gym bars or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, a few kilograms, I've got a ton. So I'm bringing mm. in a, you know, you you thought you had weight. I'm bringing in a fucking ton. Yeah, and then that's fair. That's with fair. the Newton apple, far from the tree, the um, son and father scheme. I was trying to do. I think it just kind of worked for that. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of I was aware that it was a little bit of reach, but I thought, okay, yeah, it yeah, works. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but but I mean, you remedy this by calling out his reaches very well. Um, I always, I actually, it was quite funny. I was I was just watching your battle this morning in the kitchen, and um, one of my housemates leaving for work, and we were just kind of watching it, and they really laughed at you. Put the hurt teens in thirteen. Why even open your mouth? Like it's just your indignation <laughs> uh, at him. It's just like, why would you do this? Like um, that's really funny. Uh, and then just end your, end with the impression of him that does kind of sound like a scouser, but you know whatever. Uh, I think but- you know what the, the first half of that impression I think is real scouse, and the, mm. the last couple of lines I, I really nail like his accent, but I, I didn't I didn't get it quick enough. I yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. get it because sometimes you got to get into character, and I wasn't doing yes. that. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, you move your cap forward, so it's like okay, yeah. we, we know even that. Like, short it, mode. It, as you said earlier, it was like battling a different. I didn't think I realized how different a Jay Short I was battling. Because I've I've been watching like a lot of his older battles, especially, so he's re- he's re-identified himself like in yeah, so yeah, many yeah. ways. Like he looks completely different. He didn't have any tattoos, any facial hair. He used to wear glasses. He looks like a different guy. He, does. he sounds different. He he uses a deeper sort of um, monotonous delivery now, and like he is a completely different battler. So I don't even think that impression was that applicable to the modern Jay Short. No, no, no. Um, bars are so hot, I can make the sun burn. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you you basically. You you do something the battlers do, and, and, it, and it's fine that they do this, but they have to realise that this is a very easy thing to do that gets a lot of reaction. You say, I'm from London, this is where we pronounce words the proper way. But bro, and... I, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't write that for like, so many bars. I just write just because I'm trying to make a point. Yeah. I didn't expect to be interrupted in that thing. Mm. And I was massively, and it's just, uh, yeah, that kind of shocked me. Yeah, yeah, because it was just, I mean, obviously you're playing to the crowd there and it gets a huge reaction. But yeah. I think in, in part, it's because the round has been so good as well. Like you've really kind of demolished, you know, his bad writing and his kind of reliance on flips and stuff like that. And, um, you know, 
Again, in the second, you do the same. You call out his um, obsession with rebuttals. Uh, when short falls, it's going to be embarrassing for man, like when your shorts fall. Um, yeah, you remind me of like a URL PG. You know how they like will go behind someone's back with their piece and make it look like they're shooting. Like you pull your shorts down as you say that bar. It's like you know, it's kind of like Don't Flop's <laughs> version of the PG step. Like you know. Okay, possibly. Yeah. Um, and, yeah I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very URL. People have said that a lot. That I'm, you know, yeah, you I'm are. Quite very a URL. I'm quite a gangster. I'm quite you know, I'm quite a bad man. So uh, if anyone knows Dre <laughs> Dennis, I would love to see Crafty against Dre Dennis. Um, that would be a really good matchup. Um, uh, seriously, uh, and then. Uh, Football, no football bars yet, but a wrestling bar. Uh, talking about Jeff Hardy on the ladder. Uh, in every mm. signature verse you spew because you damage right. your opponents, but those flips are just hurting you. Right, yeah. So a wrestling bar. I don't know that was my first one I've used in battle rap, but mm. yeah, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan, man. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw you <laughs> tweeting about it recently. And uh, then we have... Um, what's your Twitter's, by the way? We'll, we'll, we'll get that out there. So the Twitter's at craft underscore D. All oh, right. Awesome. But most other platforms, you'll find me with a dash, craft dash D, but Twitter doesn't let you use dashes, so it's yeah. craft underscore D. And the, the name crafty, is that just... How did that come about? Um, it's probably as basic as you think it is. Mm-hmm. It just uses the word craft, creates the, the, the word out of the two words. And my initial is D, because my name's yeah. Danny. So there you go. Right, wow, that is uh, that is a disappointment. Cheers, Graf. It is. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> and then, but then you ramp up into what we're talking about for the crafty ramp up. I'm a fact dropper, exposing you as a bad jar. You're a band, bad rapping land squatter, a bandwagon back hopper, short rounds pissing off the fans like Math Hopper. Someone said that to me recently. That was like my, their favorite bar in that battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Brilliant was like, bar. That, I was I wasn't meaning it to be, but like, I think it's kind of, it kind of just summarised the point a little bit. Yeah, it's, but it's, like, again, that round was like I was just going for the narr- like literally. When I wrote that round, I thought, like, I went into that battle, like, not arrogant about the win. I like, was like, he could beat me, but if he beats me, it's going to be a 2-1 because my second round is going to be his second. Like, I just, I was so confident with that round, like, the angles I had and the way I yeah. broke it down, the narrative, and I just kind of felt like it was going to get the reactions. And when it did, it was just, like, really, really good uh, yeah. live to be feeling that energy and to actually, it, it gives you a lot of confidence as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you, you own it, really. I think your delivery is really strong. Um, oh, thanks, man. No, it's it's true. Like th- these verses are absolutely brilliant, and I can't I can't deny them. Um, absolutely love watching this battle. And then you know Jay Short. I don't think Jay Short was quite a hundred percent for this battle. I've got to be honest. I think he kind of gets beaten easy every round. I've spoken to Jay recently. I think he outperforms me in this battle. His performance is is brilliant. I think mm-hmm. it's really rewatchable um, as a battle. Thanks to him uh, as much as 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 me. You know what I mean? They can't yeah. say oh one person's good to make a good battle like no his three rounds are really good and they're really entertaining and he has some great bars he probably has the the bar of the battle with his breaking down my flips and saying i made a brand name off the freelance like an adidas logo i thought that was brilliant and um oh. but he told me like um very recently because we well, i chat with jay a lot anyway we skype and that and we we get on well and um he was saying for that battle he it was a lot of throwaways he didn't write a lot of that material for me and I think you can tell and the fact that I wrote all my material for him um, I think that's kind of makes a difference yeah totally yeah but it's just a case of he doesn't really seem to come at you with much it, it's he's not kind of like digging dirt or anything whereas you know with you every verse is memorable for different reasons because you're going at different angles and I really like the um, third where you talk about his bible verse affiliations <laughs> and Ur starts to laugh as soon as you call him out for it I think they've got a little private joke going on yeah, there yeah. they were on a tour together I remember Jay yes, and yeah, Impact yeah. and Ur so I think they turned to each other to start laughing but it throws me off a little bit but they've obviously had a private joke in themselves thinking that's bad but he does that yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. you can see that yeah exactly um uh, and then just talking about how people aren't really interested in it they skip your flows like throwing pebbles really nice uh, i came here to disrupt your wave thought you could just you thought you could just row and pedal um uh, mm. dismissing bible verses like the evolutionary theory you know yeah i mean that, that that yeah it's pretty decent as well i love the whole response ability back at home so you're talking about his flips and his ability to respond to people but also the fact that he has a daughter i think and yeah so um, that was ending that kind of scheme oh, brilliant and, and that's you another know what, like, yeah go on sorry no 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 i was just gonna say i think that was my in my opinion the, the best thing i wrote for that battle that mm. bar mm. um i just felt like it, it made the point like if I was from a neutral perspective looking at which bars of mine were whack and like which were which were good, that would be like my my best one. I just felt like um, ever it really it really hit. Um, it might be the most effective line I've spat mm. in terms of it summarised everything I said in the battle and had the wordplay there. But um, I think yeah, it it just it went off, man. I was really happy that it went off. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was worried about it. 
No, it's fantastic. And you do kind of like, you know, with your hand signal that it's response ability rather than one word. And yeah, and that... I hate that shit, but sometimes you've got to do no, it. No, you do. <laughs> no, you do. You well, other people do. do, I hate it. I'm going to be a hypocrite about it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think in this word, it's just necessary because it's such a good pun that it's almost unnoticeable. It's like one of those really like snug fit puns that, that you kind of wouldn't even oh, okay. uh, pick up on. So, yeah, that's totally fair. And like, gets a lot of money. But you mentioned again, you were talking about Jay Short. I didn't mention in my kind of little Jay Short ramble about his um, rebirth, about the fact that you were saying he went on the USA tour. Um, mm. You say yeah. he couldn't make an impact with the quill, which is nice, you know, just yeah. a little sum up for the fans and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, he battled E. Farrell, um, who I'm really excited to say is going to be on Battle Rap Resume very soon as well. Okay, cool. Um, and our first sort of international guest, that should be pretty I good. Thought, I, thought, I thought JB him, actually. I said in the battle, because uh, I was battling JB, I said he lost, but I thought, I thought he took E. Farrell. Um, I, I wasn't. I wasn't happy with Efrao's approach, man. I think that the bad bar stuff is lazy now, man. Yeah, like, everyone does that now. Like Lou Cipher did it. Oh weekends. man, I'm doing round of bad bars. It's like it's been done, man. I, I I couldn't believe that Lou Cipher would waste such an opportunity. He's just do a round of bad. But he was yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Shock, <laughs> yeah. Shocks. I mean, we're very pro shocks here on Battle Rap Resume because. <laughs> Well, cause he's, I'm a he's, shocks fan, man. Yeah, because so he's fucking awesome. I saw you freaking out at the back of the old English battle, man. It's good to see, like you know. Oh man, um, yeah, that one. I got caught slipping on camera a little bit in that one. No, you were there, faces. man. <laughs> Fuck it. Who cares? That's what. That's what they're for. I hate like nah, stone no, face no, yeah. fans. Um, don't flop Jester to don't flop Leicester. Don't flop extra, uh, which is a really really funny bar as well. And um, yeah, coming out of that, how, how was it afterwards? You'd won. You'd taken on someone who was really well known in don't flop, especially at this time. You'd taken a huge scalp. It must have been quite a rush yeah no that was um that was exciting to have have got the decision against jay short because as i say he is such a big name and don't flop and has been there for years and as you say usa tour battled big names best freestyler in the league mm. well top three you know what i mean um if you're like him pedro you know what i mean so like it was cool to to get that um and i felt like that was the win that was gonna kind of prop people's ears up a little bit if anything mm-hmm. um and then that's when I really got offered 7BW after that. So that was really cool. I got offered the birthday weekend battle. And then I actually got offered Conquer B after that. Do you want to battle Conquer and, and while you're waiting for that? And I was like, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I got, I got a couple of decent opportunities off that battle. So it was really cool. Mm, yeah, definitely. And it was just, it's again, stress people to go back and watch it. Um, it's a really fantastic battle, but as you were saying, before Heretic, which was obviously kind of laying as your date with Destiny in the future, as it were, at the end of the year, you know, the two newcomers <laughs> uh, going off, which is which is really, really exciting. And great that Don't had such a um, great, you know, surge of talent coming through the league as well. Um, I'm thinking about people like Ambi and Bobby Rex as well, and Lex mm. coming up, and people like yourself and yeah. Heretic that are more established. You know, it's a really exciting time to watch yeah, Juan league. this year as well. Juan, really of course. Um, yeah. I actually, <laughs> I actually shouted at Juan um, the other week. I, I live in Oxford. Oxford and I was just biking around and I saw him with Rob Wilson. I don't know if he lives in Oxford or okay. I don't really know where he is, but he's just walking around the corner. I just shouted at him just that I love his battles and he just kind of went thanks like that. So just, <laughs> I just kind of bowled. I was like, oh god, it's one. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we go into um, Conquer. When they say we're a close match, I laugh at it. Yeah, we're both unbeaten, but I've had good opponents, hard clashes, bro. Your most hard challenge was Smart Alex. Your no. boss, <laughs> Which is like maybe your most fun battle. Like, in terms of, it's quite even, I find this battle. I think you two play off each other, and you've kind of, you, you're quite serious in your battles, aren't you? You're quite kind of like, you know, not, not puritanical, but you are trying to teach someone something and sort of <laughs> remind them why they're shit in a really eloquent way, you know? <laughs> Just break it down. Um, but this one seems a nah, bit more Conquer, fun, you know? Conquer's a fun opponent, man. Yeah, and yeah. We, we know each other a bit. We've met each other a few, a few events and stuff, mm-hmm. so it was one of those ones. When, we, when I first started, I was like, yeah, let's battle sometime. And I, it felt like it was never going to happen. And then when I got offered that, I was like, yeah, okay. Part of the reason I took it as well, I would have liked. I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to prepare for Heretic because I did that battle. Mm. But I would have liked. I, the reason I did that was because Heretic had five wins, and the the kind of competitive side of me was like, "Cool, I beat Conquer. I've got five wins. He's got yeah. five wins. We're going into this battle even." Yeah. So I kind of I thought I'd battle Conquer, mm-hmm. and as soon as I got offered that, I thought of a couple of really good bars. I was like, "Okay, now I've forgot a couple of bars. I want to spit them now." Yeah, <laughs> pretty much that was the decision making process. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think I I, re- I definitely respect you for um, taking on a battle knowing that you had a massive battle at Seven BW coming up. Like, I kind of understand the five wins, five wins thing, but like, I know personally, I would have just taken the extra time to kind of make sure that the round. No, were I, right, I regret, you know? I regret doing that. I, mm. I was, I I felt like I could have prepared. I thought I was prepared. I thought my, my heretic battle was my best writing so far. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I still would have liked to just my performance get that down, like have a little bit time to step back and analyze my battles because I never really got out of the zone. I was like, I battled press and about Jay, and about yeah, you were very Conk busy, and about yeah. Heretic and that. Now I've, I've had a couple months off and I'm gonna have another two three months off. Um, that's kind of what I've decided to do, and I'm just like. You see certain things you wrote and certain things you went. I thought I would have, I would have approached that a little differently had I mm-hmm. a little break between the battles. But um, no, I still enjoyed the Conquer battle, man. I felt um, he was probably my best opponent so far out of the six battles I've done. Mm-hmm. I feel like he was just brilliant. His his punches, his um, yeah, I mean, how how strong his punchlines were for one. And just how good a writer and rapper he is, man. He's such a good rapper. He's such his flow and his his cadence and the way he he structures his material mm-hmm. and the syllables are always perfect. And I, I love his writing. So he was a great opponent, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I kind of watched a few of his battles here and there and I wasn't too familiar with him before we were going into the research for this. And uh, the ease to which he battles, the kind of the mm. sense of kind of just, it's really enjoyable to watch. You can tell he's under no duress. He's got really yeah. good content and material, but he can just get it off. Um, you know, yeah. just, it almost feels unrehearsed. It's just, it's really, really And well he's done. funny as well. He's yeah. really funny. Like if he delivers a funny bar, he knows how to do it. He doesn't have to be like overly sarcastic and dramatic about it. Mm-hmm. He'll just like, be like you're a dickhead yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like that, that's yeah exactly yeah. um so you have another uh a little little craft multi sort of thing here this is homemade to fast package no pain to fast damage brendan rogers gonna have that as a football quote uh, yep. he can't manage brent in office i'm sarcastic when they say i'm a close match i laugh at it i've had good opponents hard challenges the hardest opponent you've had is smart alex um, yeah. which again is kind of almost a conquer B punch just kind of pulling it down to like you've been against shit people so you know you're not very good um, you speak <laughs> about his legacy of not showing up apparently he showed up not showed up five times uh, I um, think it's six now with six. Um, Jake because he no showed JB wow. at 7BW pre-party yeah a little bit of a rep there for conquer on that one so I had to go in and that and also it's completely untouched like no one had mentioned it in the battle which is really strange so I, I I went in on that. <laughs> I felt that's literally the first bar I thought of. I was mm-hmm. thinking, um, I, I, when I thought of the but, Kong B battle, and he's like, oh, should I take this? He might just skip me. He might bypass me. Like, you, oh, wait, by, remember Javi Hernandez yeah. bypassing. And I yeah. thought, like, damn, that's such. I'm like, I want a battle just to spit that bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's another football bar. Yeah, brilliant bar as well. Um, calling out Javi Hernandez. Um, and then you also talk about shotty when shotty describes not showing up that's what he's talking about uh which is really funny as well uh might strike with the marshal like my name's van gal that play for van gal so the strike with marshall with marshall the move marshall the player yeah yeah no yeah um, no, yeah, yeah the striker yeah. striking um, so it kind of yeah, marshall, yeah. Little, little um, one there. yeah, yeah no that's a good one as well um you call out his music in the second round. Apparently, he calls it post grindcore, and you just call mm. that out for being the stupid thing that it is. That's really funny. Uh, I hate shit like that. I hate um heretic. There's a really funny thing against um Stowaway, where it's like just because you call yourself your music wave doesn't make it interesting. Mm. Like wave synth. Yeah. And like and that, and that stuff. I hate that kind of stuff. Like the genre stuff. Like come on, man. It's, it's big rap up, or it's big metal or whatever. Yeah. It is. Big up vapor wave. <laughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, talk about giving blowjobs in the coat closet. Yeah, so basically he he wrote a Facebook status about um how he works. He he doesn't he works night shifts, but he doesn't have to do anything. He just plays video games. Right. And I was like, I'm gonna turn it on its head again. That was just like as you say, like the press one bar about Kalasho. It's just cheap as it's, fuck. It's one of like, those things. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things. But um, it kind of it. I didn't like. You know what I mean? I, I didn't edit that battle as much. I said that and the press one battle weren't edited as much as the other battles. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally just wrote that and I was like, okay, it's in. I've written it now. It's in the battle. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, that that little scheme, um, I could have delivered that a little bit better. Come yeah, I'm, I'm not like calling out for scrutiny. It's just um, as a multi, it's not bad. <laughs> Coke plus <closet, laughs> jobs. You yeah, know? pretty much. Yeah, I think the multi, if it's a good rhyme, it yeah. it's kind of sometimes makes it a good bar. Yeah, that's kind of felt about that bar. But it's just kind of, if you compare this to the Jay Short battle, it's maybe a little bit less precise in its attack. But you're against kind of a lighter opponent, really, and I think you mm. still basically measure up to him as well. I didn't take it seriously, man. I wrote, I wrote for about uh, four days, and I re- remembered it for about four days. Like, yeah. I usually, I, the Jay Short battle, I put three weeks into that, mm. you can tell. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and this, uh, in your third as well, we'll just kind of go through this Conquer B battle. Um you talk about uh, <laughs> if you're gonna get with some random slosher, at least learn how to wrap it proper. Yeah, that was a weird uh, bar. That was basically again, that was more for the multis. But I was trying to, I was trying to think of a way, yeah, to talk about that touchy issue of um, kind of rapping about promiscuity, yeah. which I was saying about Jay Short, and kind of getting my, 
his personality for that without being like um you know misogynistic or anything which i tried to avoid so i thought oh, okay i'll just kind of call you and the girl both out on it mm, mm. and i'll leave it at that <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's fair enough. We get on to um, it's Chelsea attacking because the Hazard will cost her, or the Hazard, hazard will cost her. Hazard yeah, cost her, yeah. yeah. Uh, slapping Conker with Maradona's hand of God. Um, so more football here, more football. Um, you have a really mm-hmm. good impression as well as I said earlier of Conker B. It's very spluttering. It's very him. Um, it's immediately identifiable. Uh, also decent decent bar as well, which is one of those bars that anyone can spit. But I just really liked it. Back to back bodies like Siamese twins. Yeah, you know what? It's one of them- like I, I wasn't too sure. But after the battle, a few people like Soul Jitsu who came to me and said that he loved that bar. A few mm. people did, and it's like I'd never heard it before. Again, no. as you say, it is one of those bars. Like I often feel like that's the great thing about Tony D. Tony D writes stuff and makes it look easy. But mm. why did no one? You you always think why did no one else think of that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but it's like it's because he's he's Tony. Yeah, he's... and he thinks that. But like that that bar, I felt like not that I'm fucking comparing myself to the vets because <laughs> I'm not at that level. But I'm saying like saying that bar it wasn't the best bar ever but it was just no one had ever said that no i've and never heard it i've never heard anyone say anything like it so i was like okay no and it like, kind of relates so i wanted to say oh i've, I've had back-to-back bodies and i was like oh what can i, I can do something with that mm-hmm. i think oh yeah mm-hmm. so. yeah no it works and like i mean i don't know if this is too fawning but that could be a tony d bar like i can you can imagine him saying that like don't gas know. me up too much <laughs> <laughs> uh, big up Tony D, by the way, fucking incredible. The way the guy um, words punches, like you say, he has that originality about him where it's just like, fuck, how, you know, poison heads going over lines like chemtrails. Like, what the ha- how has no one said that before? He's ridiculous. No, but like, um, they're yeah. talking about football buzz. Yeah. He's had, um, oh man, to get Etiat to get off the main road. Like, yeah. Yeah, amazing. that one. He had um, against, was it youth? I think youth. Oh, local. turned he a said, mic um, on. Bro, that's that's oh ridiculous. Oh my god! I made a career when I turned the mic on. I'm like Gareth Bale. It's like, fuck. But um, the the only the I have a slight problem with that bar that stops me from loving it entirely. You 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 don't say ah mic on. You don't say I turned a Bale. I turned a Ronaldo. You say I turned Ronaldo. I think it works. I think it works. It does work. And, and it's, it's one of those you've got to, you've got to, to make good bars. You've got to, it's not always going to be natural speech rhythms you're yeah. using. Like this happens a lot, especially like URL type rap. Oh I mean that God. that I mean fucking Tony called out Chiller for that. They do not use normal spelling to make the buzz, but I think something like that turned a mic on. I went. It's you know I think I just it's yeah, too just, good. It's too good. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's absolutely brilliant. And um, oh, I'm trying to think of some other good ones that Tony said football wise. I'm sure they'll come back to me. But yeah, the guy is. Uh, he said, um, I, "I've got you ain't got the heart for the game like for Bruce Mwamba." Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fucking against Adam the rapper. Well. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, you end by saying, um, "I've got fourteen, as in you've you've won. This is your fourteenth round that you've won, um, mm-hmm. but I'm on a card with Max Sherry, so I lost all three. Um, yeah, you know what? That was good. I, I still think like out of my six battles, um, the only round I personally think I'm, I could have lost was that second round against Conquer. Ironically, mm-hmm. I think his second round was fucking insane yeah yeah his but um round was really strong because they were so different though maybe our man was all political and well, his was just bars so like you can't, it's hard to judge him but you, you could have given that round to him um big up big up max sherry by the way um as yeah man max sherry's a g don't um, get twisted i was nah, just joking around no he's a good guy i was spoken yeah. to him a few times um at events and stuff he's, he's, a, he's a decent guy um so we'll get on to your final battle now well i'm mounting an attack he's sitting his peak so let's consider the streak he got past kid verbal some skinhead team got past rob wilson with bruises like the skin of a peach got past danny jack with jokes about his skin which was weak and got past bizzle and stole away by the skin of your teeth you're an average rapper it's a shame these battles been rigged for you because apart from that Danny Jack display, there ain't a battle I'd give to you. You've had one good performance. One spitting's true, so don't get misconstrued, because you are only good one time like Hitler's youth before he switched his views to killing Jews. Good one time. Like- <laughs> um, this might be a little controversial, um, so I'll just say this before we go into the battle. Um, yeah. I was I was there at seventh birthday. At, at seventh birthday, yeah. Yes, I was there. Um, cool. I was there. I was there with my friend, and um, we saw the first battle. We saw I was only there on the Saturday. Was you versus Heretic? Um, saw it live. Yeah, I was there. So excited to see this live as well. Wasn't really necessarily a huge Heretic fan or anything, but definitely, um, definitely was a fan of yours. And was just you know the, the sense that it was two newcomers going at it as well was just really really exciting as well. And when I saw it in the building, mm. I don't know if you remember. I assume after the end of the battle, you just kind of like so much is going through your head, and you know whatever you can't really recall. But um, I did tweet you because I thought that it was uh, it was a complete travesty that you lost. Um, I basically right. I, I had you winning, yeah. 
and um, I think you lost four one by judge's decision, mm-hmm. and um, so which yeah, four one. You know, quite quite. I, I don't, I'm not actually sure who the judges were, but I mean, we can get into that later. So the judges were yeah, oh, there we go. Jay Short, Shocks the Rebel, Juan, Soljitsu, and Brucey. Okay. Okay, so yeah, quite quite kind of established, kind of um, yeah. No, they were they were all like in mix. the VIP sort of area. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, what happened was afterwards, I tweeted you saying you won it, and then kind of like on the last episode with shocks of Barrett resume, I said that I thought you won it as well. Have to say, going back, I do think you lost it, and okay. um, I have to admit, like you know, a bit to myself really that I'm not going to hold to any dogmatic opinions. I'm really <laughs> no, that's fair, man. And gotta... uh, watch battles and scrutinize them and be fair with them. And like, I'm not like you know. Um, a huge heretic guy or anything like that you know this is just sort of obviously i am a big fan of yours um i've just found the tweet by the way sorry i've just been looking through um i tweeted on the 14th of november 2015 yeah. um at tom Quee poet by the way if you want to follow me but not don't really do battle rap stuff but anyway i tweeted crafty just got absolutely robbed at don't flop hashtag seventh birthday outwrote <laughs> outwrote heretic every round but came out four one down hashtag injustice um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you responded back facts um <laughs> And I believe yeah. no, Harry- I was um I was to be fair yeah. after that event um which got really misconstrued. I tweeted a few things. I got people like start start saying like, I've I've quit battle rap and shit, and I didn't even write anything like that, yeah. which is quite funny. But I um especially in the evening after a few drinks, I was mm. just like tweeting like I can't remember on Facebook something. I wrote someone on Facebook that I was just like I think I won the battle, and that was about it. Mm. Like, I wasn't like oh heretic shit or like, heretic was really good, and I'm actually a fan of heretic stuff. So make that clear, like only on your podcast, like me and Heretic get on well. Like, yeah, we yeah, no. Go for drink after events, like you know what I mean. But I, I, I personally thought even now, I mean, I've, I've watched it back. Friends of mine watch it back, all that kind of stuff. I, I think I took every round, but that's how it goes sometimes, man. Mm. I kind of stumbled in my second two. I felt like the first round can't you can't give the first Heretic when I watch it. I feel like he spits first. I come back, out. I perform it well. Everything I say hits bars the jokes come off and i'm just like yeah one nil but the second two and interesting you mentioned shocks because he was one of the judges and he came up to me and talked to me after the battle and he said to me um which is a fair point and a few people have made it that he gave the battle to heretic based on stumbles of mine yes so the second two rounds i stumbled through it a little bit um which was a lot due to the fact that this wasn't getting a reaction especially from my better bars um so i lost a lot of confidence just during the battle man and shock said to me you know, if I didn't stumble, it would have been an easy win. But because he based on performance, he has to give it. Mm-hmm. Which for me, like, it's, it's such a game of opinions, Battle Rap, because yeah, I would never do that personally if it was me. Now, I'm not saying that he's wrong. That's, like, that's how he judges. People judge differently. I wouldn't judge someone based on performance. If someone stumbled a bit um, and was better, had better material, I'd give it to them. So I, I can understand why he gave it to Heretic. Like, as, as you say, like you've watched it back and kind of changed your mind. I yeah. can see why people think of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we'll get into it. I just got, yeah, it's difficult because obviously there was so much on the line here as well. It wasn't just battling, you know, live winter at a post party. This was, you know, a big event and it feels that way when you watch your back actually it does feel there's a yeah. lot, there's a lot at stake here. Um, I do have heretic, um, winning the first and I okay. think we'll just, we'll just go through that in a little bit more detail because unfortunately I think that when this episode is going to be released, which will be sort of late February, I don't think your battle with heretics actually out until early March. It's something um, like this, early March, mid-March. Yeah, like I think that, I just yeah. checked before we went live. I think it's like the 14th, maybe, something like that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, get that anywhere you can, and then it will be out on the 14th. But, um, yeah, so Heretic, it's like he calls you out at the start for not being cool, basically, um, saying you can't say fam, or, you know, you, you say fam yeah. now and then, and which is kind of, I was a bit like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, he brings up an entire battle that you choked against JB. I, I don't think that got released, did it? Or no, nah, that whole event didn't get released, man. What was that um, event? I think it was odd of him to bring that up, considering he. I know he mentioned it, but considering he lost to that event, that was a bit odd. But um, it was a two days before our battle live winner. Again, I was I was even more ill, by the way. At this point, I was. It was 11 p.m. Oh. We were battling outside the train station because the venue got closed. We had to wait for hours. And I'd learnt my bars. I travelled up from Bristol that morning and wrote my bars that morning. Oh. Um. I was drafted into this tournament last minute because someone pulled out. Mm-hmm. So these guys had known the tournament was on for like two months as well. Oh, right. Okay, um, wow. So they probably had been written around a few indirects and stuff. I didn't have anything I wrote all for JB. But um, yeah, I kind of just turned up and I could feel the bars leaving my head. Um, I was coughing like mad. We ended up outside the train station um, doing a battle with weed smoke all around my face. Right. I, I don't smoke weed. I don't like the smell of weed. All that shit. So that put me off a lot anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
so like it was just one of them ones man it was tough but i went first and i spat a couple maybe a couple bars freestyled a couple bars then said i didn't even like choke i, I obviously choked but i said you know what you can go through i just said to him i remember to see going now you go through man i don't care that much mm. and so i let him spit and then he spat his round he got it all fine um he had some weird fucking strange angles and beat me right um but obviously i didn't spit anyway but um yeah i choked i choked that battle so that was two days before my battle with live winter it was a pre-party at checkpoint yeah um but it never got uploaded it's not an official release it wasn't officially um registered that tournament on the channel so you know i i yeah. forget that one well, it's, I not mean, loss. it's not yeah. a loss it didn't yeah. happen you know it didn't it didn't get uploaded so can... that's kind of um i just let that one go and then focus on live winter and then to kind of took it from there well yeah i think i think people want to know about the jb thing or maybe the fans of the show and, and myself definitely does just because yeah. we're just interested you know in what happened and i don't really kind of you know again i think it's a weird angle from heretic no one's going to ever see this battle no one really knows what what happened people yeah, and people... he lost in that, and the, at the tournament <laughs> yeah well i mean he does say that to be fair to him he yeah does, he, he makes a punch out of it but yeah. it's still like oh uh, you just said you lost <laughs> i see I, I i i get that i get that you want five wins going in and stuff but i mean people lose it's it's not necessarily yeah a flaw like it's just you know there's always going to be people better than you and that's kind of the beauty of competition that you can improve yeah. Um, and look at old scores and old 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 records and stuff. So he takes that, he twists it. He says, "You spent two minutes looking into uh, staring teary eyed into Urs. I'm disappointed, disappointed face, face, which yeah, is funny. a huge bar. Um, it's not necessarily clever in any way. It's just he's just literally just saying what happens, and making it a bit. Yeah, like, that's what that's what he does. Yeah. That's, what, that's, that's what he's good at, man. Yeah, he says he says uh, he does kind of. It's an aspect because Heretic's one of my favorite battlers at the moment, um, and it's an aspect I do and don't like about him is that he doesn't really make punchlines. He kind of says." you did this, mm -hmm. you did that, you mm -hmm. wrote this online. And it's like, for me, it's just, you're just saying it. So you're not actually ex leading up or building up to a punchline about it. You're kind yeah. of just saying, you lost in that thing to JB. Yeah, like, yeah. For me, it's kind of easy to do that. But he does it effectively because he performs and he does the whole, um. because advantage of Heretic is he's, he's been through drama school. Right. So he's like, oh, I, oh, I might be wrong about that, but he's got an acting background. So mm -hmm. he kind of, um. he performs in that way. Like he's theatrical, and so he can make stuff sound good, even if it's just he's saying a very simple thing. He makes it sound really, really funny, and can convey that to the audience. So that's what he kind of did. And I felt like his first round um, was what I'd call a defensive strategy in battle rap. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of go at someone, um, or you can kind of explain something about them that's going to affect the rest of the battles. So he kind of set it up like you use words like penmanship. He says stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to. And he was saying, oh, you do this, I don't do that. Kind of doing an impression yeah. of me saying, oh, you like doing impressions, I'm going to do an impression of you. I felt he'd set up in a defensive way, that battle. Um, in the same way, I, I think I, I might have done that a couple of times in battles as well. But that's, that was a good strategy that he kind of took. It was. Um, he's a good battler is, as, as much as anything. He kind of, as much as I feel like I outwrote and outwrapped him and even in the first outperformed him, he outbattled me in that battle. He did, and the problem is, I mean, you talk about the defensive strategy, but the problem is you kind of prove him right in your first. He yeah. he sets up a lot of Which traps. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that just as we... I just want to finish kind of his points, and then... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Because he goes into an impersonation of you, which... I think is really good, but I think the reason I found it so funny was because I've been watching your battles for ages now, yeah. and he just he did nail it. I have to say, um, you know, what? I, I have to say I've, I've spoken to a few people about this. I generally, yeah, think it was a trash impression. Really? Like, I think it oh. sounded like villain. Oh no, 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 no! I think think voice wise crap. But I think. Oh right, you're talking about the actual. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about what he yeah, says. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know um, what you mean. You know, the syllables and all that. So all the syllables. Yeah, yeah. You know, your fingers, multigasms, the reach. Um, you know, the the um. The twitching in the jeans, which I have no issue doing sometimes. And also, I think one of the things that he does, which is very true, your kind of slightly forced history references um, that don't that kind of popped off most with taking off a Stuart's head, I've got to say. Mm. And I don't, I think they kind of a little bit cluttering in your rounds, but we'll get onto that. So he kind of breaks you down pretty comfortably. It is a defensive strategy. I totally know what you mean. And you definitely go on the attack. And that is kind of the yin and yang of who wins and who loses. Um, finishes off with kind of a classic sort of battle rap, don't flop kind of punchline where you where you twist the final bar to make it mean something new. Stop counting your punchlines and make your punchlines count. He's basically saying, you know, yeah, you're a far more furious fighter than I am, but I, you know, I can make those, you know, it's like Snatch, Brad Pitt, you know, you can just, you can make that one punch land um, yeah. so much more than you. So, 
you begin with some great stuff. Um, you bring up the Christmas uh, card, the kid verbal headline battle. I like that. I like that in your battle against the international, you kind of you bring it back, similar to how like Tay, I don't know, two superheroes. It'll flash back to when they were children and they didn't get on. You're like, okay, here was me a year ago. I was just watching you doing this, and now I'm here. You know, and yeah. you build on that. One thing the hair taught us um, is 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 that head start means nothing. Um, which is a pretty good, pretty good bar as well. Were you punning? You were punning on hairs. Double pun there um, with with the Aesop fable and the hair. Yeah, so yeah. it was just um, the hair and the tortoise is a fable. Mm-hmm. So the hair taught us. Yeah, that's it. Really, that's the word play on it. And then about the head start um, relating to the actual a physical head start in a race and the head start he's had time wise in battle rap. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think one of your first kind of flatter ones, which I don't really know where the punch is in this. You you talk about being handcrafted, uh, crafts in the name. All right, so that one. Um, so well, there was actually never a trophy, but they were saying they would build this battle as a trophy battle. Mm. So that was me. I'm, I can't try to remember the bar that I actually said. Um, so handcraft, different craft is a name. Yeah, so it's me saying they're already carving in the name because they know I've won. So you yeah. see, like in tennis and that, like, yes, if you're at Wimbledon yeah. tennis, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see them, and if it's like two, you can see yeah. them starting to. <laughs> It's just as soon as the thing's finished, yeah, yeah, they're like yeah. right tapping in something like they're already like it was an arrogant thing to say, you know what I mean? It was fucking arrogant as shit. It was like they're already crafting my name. <laughs> yeah, in. I'm barely I'm... five bars in, but you so know. you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, which is the whole point of it. It's about it hasn't even started yet, and they've already written me as a winner. Mm-hmm. Um, so to say the craft is in the name, um, yeah, that was hand handcrafted, yeah, for me. So like it's been crafted in the name, craft is in the name. It was just a double entendre, man. It's not like. It's the kind of ever. No, it's kind of like arse bars in it. You can't spell bars. You can't spell crafted <laughs> without putting arse, the craft yeah. in you it. Can't spell, you can't spell it. You can't craft something without physically crafting it and putting the word craft. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. I should have said that. I should have said you can't you can't craft a trophy without putting the craft in it. I should have done like that. <laughs> you would have won the battle with that. That is, that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that would have gone, shocks Hindsight. would have been going, cra- <laughs> oh, no, arc would have been going mad for that. Um, but, you know, um, you, you bring up... Um, you did it in your press one battle and you do it now again you bring up the soul c major clash which is obviously uh incredible mm. like 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 oh, I've done it twice, so it, yeah. so good um uh, and and you talk about uh I'm, I'm paraphrasing here but now you see you know this is leeds versus london now you see the reasons why they've done it and the reason yeah. that, you know blah blah see which, done, which the done it. doesn't get applause it gets a few guys going what and then it just goes quiet again. Yeah, people who um who have seen the battle pretty, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Which I was a bit like I was when when you said that in the building um around me everyone was quiet and when you said that I was like I wonder why you said that I was like this is the opening battle of a seventh birthday and people aren't gonna know that battle they're gonna people in the crowd are gonna know O'Shea and Luna they're not gonna know Soul well Shotty Horror Major. I think a lot of the crowd that day were there for Shotty Horror yeah that's true that's um true well. I I made a big mistake in this battle man mm-hmm. um I think what lost me the battle. Um, well, I, I obviously, you know, I, I think I won it, but the thing that would have lost me it is that my material was written for the normal crowds. Mm. It was for a um, bricks and jam, a Phyllis Elbow crowd. That's true. This 7BW crowd. I had a heretic star, but he's like that anyway. He's naturally, he writes um, ways that anyone could switch on the battle, never seen battle before, and they'll get it. Yeah. So my stuff was so like, things like that, and... I had so many kind of... Ref- I was referencing Viewpoint in my third round. Yeah. And I had a scheme about Viewpoint and obviously will comment out, but if I spat it in Fiddler's Elbow, I would have got massive crowd participation. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, that's the only reason I put it in there. I didn't really like the bar. So I took out so much material for that, but I'd written like six rounds worth of material and I was choosing what to put in and I chose the wrong stuff. Even though I still think I did enough, I, I could have chose kind of the more obvious funny stuff that I'd written for him when I went for the bars instead. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you, you get you get wrapped up in the history stuff as well, which is just kind of a shame, really, because that would be ringing in people's heads. Okay, Heretic said that Crafty always forces history bars, and then you'd force two in a row. You basically do Hitler's youth before he switched his views to killing Jews. Which, but to be fair, that popped, though. That popped. That did pop, but yeah. he didn't switch his views. You know what I mean? It's just kind of... It just felt a little... Sim- and then, then the Christmas truce on the Christmas truce. It's like that image is so wrapped up in British nostalgia that any mention of it is going to get a reaction. And it just felt like, I don't know, you could have done more with good one time. Like the Live Winter Spew one was really good, but it just, I felt like that was a really cool concept. But then it was just kind of like quite, I don't know, we, we, we know no, these. I know, I know what I mean. Know. Like a few people have come up to me and said they, they loved that scheme. Mm-hmm. That they, they thought like it was the best scheme in the battle. Of that 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 bit and the Christmas truce bit and that well I mean yeah of course of so like uh, obviously like I can see why people wouldn't like it mm-hmm. but um it just I kind of it didn't feel that. as clever as off of a Stuart's head is all I guess the I'm people saying. had um kind of shown it to 
when when I just because I go through the battle, people like um, yeah, my friend course. John. John is there. He, he he's uh, writes for the website as well. You know, he's a bit more inf- involved in Don't Flop now. But I spat that that scheme to him specifically, and he was like, "That is that is literally going to be the best scheme of the battle." Mm. So I was kind of gassed to say it, but it, it did go off. Um, in the yeah, building. I mean, I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I mean, ultimate. Uh, yeah, I guess ultimately, battle rap resume is kind of my opinion i guess in a sense and like no, that's right uh, no, no yeah and i'm not yeah. saying like it's you know but i just i just i guess it just prefers some of the history bars and you do as you say christmas truce you do multigasm in heretic's face um if there ever yeah. was a multigasm you do kind of just like eh, you just kind but of the thing is like about that that's all like again mo- saying someone multigasms it's funny yeah I, mm. that, like to say that word but you're you're that's kind of criticizing me for being a good writer it's like, oh, you write loads of multis, like you, oh, you no, write no, in a no, way no. that... It's, it's in like physically, you, it almost looks like you're kind of gasming. Yeah, no, obviously yeah. that comes into it with the impression yeah. and that. But then saying things like, um, which is clever to do, and it, it does get the crowd on your side, but saying things like you use words like penmanship mm. or lyricism, and Shuffle does this, and Shuffle's really the originator of this whole new um, brand of battle rap where it's like lyricism and bars aren't cool. Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of hijacking words like lyricism, penmanship, which I'd happily use. And Tony uses it in a recent battle and other people, Gemini used it in that same yeah. weekend. And like, for me, that's not, that doesn't mean anything to say, oh, you're not good because you use words like penmanship and because you use loads of multis. It's like, for me, that's just kind of, it's a good tactic to get people on your side and to be like, oh, jokes are better. But I don't think that, I don't feel like that detracted from my material mm-hmm. that weekend. No, and I mean, look, obviously I love bars more than anything else. Like, you know, I much more than jokes and I agree with you. But it's just, that's the beauty of battling, really. It's it's not always a writing competition. I mean, some some of the great battles are. No, of course. But, you know, um, you also speak about, I think maybe the weakest stuff in, in this first is when you actually just attack his physical appearance. And it's just very, oh, okay. it's kind of dub rc you know, kind of, you look like you get them from a Camden market, you look like a hobo, you look like Arsene Wenger, it's just, you look like, you look like, you look like, and like, again, think... that, was, that was just more for the, <laughs> I was trying to wrap up everything that he like looks like, so I was kind of the veganism yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, the kind yeah. of the, the the wealth, wealthy kind of stuff, They're just to kind of f- find a rhyme, which was, yeah, Camden market mm-hmm. vendor, Marks and Spencer, Marks Garden Spencer, Centre, yeah. and Arsene yeah. Wenger, and I was just kind of like, <laughs> concepts and put them all together, no, to say I, what he looks like, I love the... it, it kind of, to be fair, it kind of did pop, yeah, so yeah, I mean, again, again, look, this this battle done. and it, I can't wait to see what people make of this battle when it gets uploaded on the official channel because I know there's going to be so much debate because you know <laughs> I'm um... probably going to ignore that completely to be honest, man. <laughs> so <laughs> do you not I mean do you not do you not go through comments then I, it depends man I, I, if I'm interested lie, I'm not really do. interested to see what people say about that battle yeah. I've kind of I've had a lot of time thinking it okay. I've I've thinking now about my next battle uh, yeah you know what I mean yeah. somebody might somebody will probably tell me and start send me screenshots people always do that kind of stuff like that but um no, I'm not too worried about it. Well, I mean, I you do like... know that you just pretty much uniformly get praised, though. I mean, it's just kind of people do really rate you. No, that's, it's cool yeah. when you see stuff like that, obviously, but obviously you can't get too caught up in it as well. Like no. YouTube comments and things like that. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm expecting a lot of... Because um, in, the, in the venue on the day, um, I had a lot, a lot, a lot of people. When I was walking out towards the, the garden area, mm-hmm. must literally, I'm not exaggerating, I think 30 people individually come up to me and said, you just got robbed. And I was just like, I was kind of, over, I think that's what gassed me up a little bit, you know what I mean? I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh shit, everyone thinks I won. Well, like, obviously it's not the case, like not everyone, like there'll be a lot of people there who thought I didn't win, but the people obviously who thought I like, would have directly spoke to me. So people who wouldn't come to me and be like, oh, you lost yeah, that, yeah. people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. But um, it, it was cool to get that kind of feedback and I'm hoping, you know, enough people when the battle comes up kind of say, ah, you know, I still think I won despite the stumbles mm-hmm, and all that, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. see what happens anyway. Yeah, totally. As I say, I'm not, I wouldn't get too caught up in it because you can just... Um, you can catch feelings, man, as well. Yeah. And it's it, not good to do that. Oh, man. God, no. And I mean, like, yeah. it's, you know, I, I think people always will debate, and that's really good about it. But it's just for me, personally, I just think you've just written better rounds. Like, oh, okay. Like, that's know, cool, man. Um, I think I know what you mean. Like, I think I think I could have done better material. I think, like, my third round against Heretic is my best round I've ever written in Battle I, 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 I like, Yeah, I want to get on come off, and I, I, love I fucking third. hate like, my delivery in that round, but, like, I just felt, but the first round kind of, I worked the crowd better. Maybe that was a difference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then just, just, to, just to mop up this first round as well. Um, Arsene Wenger is obviously in a football reference. And you say, I love this. You said that he looks like every Chelsea Youth Academy prospect. Yeah, uh, I kind which, of thought that was true though. Yeah, it is kind of true. <laughs> it's really funny. Just the dreads and the athleticism. It's just kind of, yeah, yeah you can definitely yeah, see yeah, them coming on. Obviously, like, it's, another, it's another cheeky race thing. But like, it's obviously, well, it's not racist you know, to say that. Like, a lot of Chelsea academies are, are mixed race. No, yeah. And like, you know, well, like, so, like if, there's not many white people in the Chelsea academy. Like, no. I never see like a youth player come out. 
who's like some skinny white guy. No, if it, if it, it, you know what I mean. Yeah, I totally agree. Like if they pan to Gus Hiddink in the in the in the dugout, you know, if you saw Heretic sitting near him, you wouldn't bat yeah. an eye in a Chelsea you wouldn't, shirt. Would you? Yeah, like you, you know, know. Yeah, he's, you know, um, he looks, he yeah. looks like he's 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 a good player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was that. Yeah, um, and then just Heretic kind of Heretic is very much a writer who kind of his rounds about one thing, and he'll just tell you about that thing for a whole round. I yeah. think this is probably his weaker round, even though it's quite good. Where he's speaking about. Um, uh, speaking about the annotations, the Mark Grist thing, 108 mm-hmm. annotations. Mm-hmm. He does have that tendency. See, even now, this is so annoying. Even when I'm discussing this battle, I'm like, did did Kraft win it? I don't know. It's it's very tight, which is what which is what's going to make it a really good upload. Because yeah. discussing it now, I'm just kind of thinking things. No, it's good to have a close battle. Though. Yeah, good. yeah, no, that, that's, that's what you want, want, isn't it? Like I remember seeing. I wasn't happy with the live battle. It was too one sided. Yeah, I like battles like this. Yeah, yeah. This this has got replay value written all over it, and it's just like. Um, you know when but like i remember seeing an interview with jc i don't know if you know jc from url it's about like chiller and stuff like that um he's he's an incre- yeah. incredible writer really good writer and there was an interview with him and he was just saying like i want to make classics like i want to make things that fans enjoy i don't want to just get paid you know a grand to just batter someone in some obscure town you want like good matches you mm. know and that's, that's what this is and um yeah he calls it out calls out your try hard battle rap persona as well what is the deal with that pedro shirt because that kind of that that distracted me when I first saw you. I mean, so we- um, that was just a, you know what? It was about two weeks before the battle. Again, John, I was talking to John. We were just chatting. And it was like Pedro was my my favorite battler. Um, yeah, Pedro since about two thousand and eleven has been my favorite battler. Yeah, there's others like someone like Tony D. I can also say it's my favorite battler for different reasons. But Pedro is like I've always loved Pedro shit. And we were just talking about it. And it was like we were talking about that bar, Mum's bar. And it was like wouldn't it be funny to get that printed on a t shirt. Yeah. We were like, we were talking about like, why haven't don't flop print out on a t shirt? Let's do that. And it's like, and, this, and I said to John, if you print them, he said I'll print them. I said if you do, it, I'll wear it in my tryout. So it was just a little private joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that was yeah. literally it. I was like, I'll wear it in my tryout. Um, yeah, so that was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he builds on that. Uh, he calls you Jeremy Corbyn for the plebs in the forum, uh, which isn't bad. Uh, I quite like the he builds again, which is kind of interesting how the Soul C Major has so many quotes from it that battle, but kind of they're all soul quotes, but you know whatever. And um, talks about you know um all the different crops and stuff like that you are the writing a fucking thesis about the mark grist and blizzard crop um mm. which i think is quite a funny insult it's a nice no, that 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 hit man that was yeah good. it's a nice solid nice solid punch um it probably matches your punch better against the sea thing um and then yeah uh, you know, I, I also think i also think that was his, his best spot of battle yeah 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 probably was his yeah. best part of the battle actually um and then in yours uh, you talk you talk about in your second um, calling out his personality. He needs parody to survive, which is really good. You talk about all the different characters he invokes mm. and all the different styles. Uh, typical vegan <laughs> gets all his information from the small print. Yeah, uh, it's got is... no reaction, but I thought it was. A good yeah, job. so all about heretic <laughs> kind of looking for information and stuff like that. Angles yeah. more tasteless than the food that you eat. Um, yeah, which is really nice. You have this thing which sounds like something that like a sort of circus ringleader would say. You say, "I have puns to have them stunned and amazed." It's just like you know, like you know, it's just kind of a quite like that little build in between. Yeah, man, it's just it's just for the the, the rhythm and that. Yeah, of that course. Of course like, you know, puns yeah. to have them stunned and amazed. Tons of fans will pump in their chains, body bang, or jumping on stage. Just like the mm, mm, the rhythm mm. of that. Again, that didn't go off, but it was one of those it ones I thought. Know. Would, yeah. I wrote. I only put that in because I thought it would get a reaction, and it kind of kind of fired. Yeah, so. it's kind of that that audience is hard though, isn't it? On that on that stage in checkpoint, you either own it or you get owned by it. Like you know, what? I'll tell you what. Like this is one thing about it. I was nervous for that battle during the battle, mm. and if I battled at the end of that weekend. I think I would have beat Heretic, only based on the fact that I was fucking nervous as shit. I, I generally, I took it personally that I wasn't getting reactions. Mm. But you watch all the battles. Oh, yeah. That was actually one of the bigger reactions, that battle. And yeah. even though it wasn't, I still felt I got slept on. But I was getting, like, if you watch battles like fucking Tech 9 versus Impact, which is a sick battle, amazing battle, and just gets nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like that whole weekend, the crowd, and I felt like, because I was the first on, I felt, oh shit, this is this is because of me that they're, they're doing that. I oh, fucked yeah, my opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if it was at the end, I wouldn't I wouldn't have cared. I would have not stumbled, nothing like that. So I think that that's, my, again, on my part, I can only blame myself. Heretic had bars that wasn't going off and he didn't let him affect him. And you got him props for that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I was there for, for the whole Saturday. So I saw a lot of battles there. And a lot of the battles, yeah, like you say, just were a bit flat, to be honest with you. Pedro O'Shea, um, sorry, not Pedro O'Shea, Pedro Uno Lavas was a weird one. Dialect mm. Gemini was pretty sick, actually. Dialect, uh, yeah. sorry, oh, Gemini Gem, Gem was went just... in. 
I yeah. can't wait for people to see that. Absolutely brilliant. Definitely get it on the PPV if it's not out already. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't you. <laughs> it was definitely the room. And I like at the end when you just basically, you, quite rightly so, like I'm not really a fan of clowning on people in battles that much. And so therefore, Heretic's Bizzo, Bizzo Grime Scheme round pissed me off as well. Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like what he was saying in the round. He was just basically saying, you're being creative. There's something wrong with that. Because it's in Preston, like you know. Yeah, that's what I kind of tried to get at. That's, that's what you, also, you nail also it, from, yeah. a, from a personal perspective, as a as a heretic fan, I, I think that's a great round. I think it did what it needed to do. I felt his second round versus me was a worse version of his second round against Bizzle. Yeah, I felt he kind of, which is something he obviously like. He still was so fresh in the scene, and like he'll learn to bring different shit to the battles. I feel like his last two or three battles have had the same approach exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt like his Bizzle round was sick, like the, what it did. But I, that's why my approach to battles is take someone's strength and t- and leave the battle with people thinking it's a weakness. For mm-hmm. me, like Jay Short, that was like the flips, turn this flip thing and literally flip it on its head. <laughs> yeah. um, and with Liv Winter, it was her, she was a feminist. So I'm going to say, oh, that's her thing. I'm going to flip that. With Heretic, like everyone talks about his round versus Bizzle all the time. Like, it's like Heretic. Oh, yeah, I've seen Heretic. Oh, his Bizzle round was sick. That's like, literally the first thing people will say. So it's like, I need to flip that. That's what's important for this battle. Yeah. So that was kind of my approach for that. Yeah, I, I think I think it wins you the round as well. It's a really strong close. Okay, sick. Um, you're basically, I'm kind of put a few bits together here, but basically say, you're not artistic because you're good, Harry. You're artistic because you can be. And then you talk about how his, his, his round. I mean, a whole round about Bizzo and the Grime scheme. That isn't even hard tactics. Tony D'Oche, that whole round was a con. And then you talk yeah, about again. It's a re- it's a niche reference. I don't think a lot of the crowd quite, have seen that. Quite battle. a niche <laughs> reference. Quite a niche <laughs> there, reference. There you go. Um, yeah. But a good reference nonetheless. And then you say uh, talking about Bizzo grinding on the grime scene. At least he's actually bothering. You epitomise the problem. How cash is prominent. How the people with the money are the rapping dominant. But we rather have the Bizzos and the Harry Robinsons. It's just great. And you're calling out his real name as well. Uh, I love that. That's a, that's a real kind of poignant end. That really that, that's got a lot of. It's, it's, it's a cheap tactic people use to um, well, be like condescending. Yeah, yeah. yeah but there's like, a lot of condescending. There's venom right, and truth Harry, in those. Like, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, ah, oh, see, now I'm swinging towards... Yeah, okay, we'll just... I'm wrestling my own inner demons here with the judgment on the battle, but we'll, 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 we'll be <laughs> objective. Heretics third, you know, um, again, we've gone from the Mark... Yeah, this was a bit... Mm. Right, I tell you, yeah, literally, as a fan a fan of Heretic, yeah, I keep saying, because he is generally one of my favourites, but yeah, this right. round is up there with Caustic against... Jefferson Price is my least favorite rounds ever in battle rap. Yeah, like from, I just hate it. I hate everything about it. I've not. I've listened to it on the day. I've watched the battle back a, a couple of times, but I've not watched that round back. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't watch it back. I just for for my own like I I don't enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it works. I don't think like I yeah. It's just, but it was clever. Again, it's really clever, and it, he does it. He wins the crowd on the day. He manages to convince people that I'm a racist, and like if you do that, fair enough. You're gonna. You're probably gonna win the battle, mm-hmm. but for for me, like, it's just it's just annoying because I I come into that battle like I'm not gonna do the political stuff because it doesn't really apply to Heretic. I listen to his music, I like his music. He's he's a he's a nice conscious thinker. He's a smart guy. He's intelligent. He's philosophical. I like his music. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of listened to mine, uh, which has similar themes, and goes, okay, I'm gonna try and use this and show that he's not left wing. And for me, it's like. You kind of you you attack your own constituency a little bit if you do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like as much as it's a cle- it's a clever round and he's um, structured it well, I just don't think it makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he just kind of just basically pulls out. You know, you've got a track called the N word, and he has this idea of playing. But it's it. about equality. This yeah. is about it's a thing. I wrote, I didn't. I was a, I wrote that as like a spoken word little thing, not even a, actually a page poetry piece. I thought you know I might make this into a track. Mm. Um, I'll just put it on a beat. I will find a beat that works for it. So um, that was about equality, man like quality of language and he kind of obviously took out but Ambi did the same <laughs> you know I mean? Ambi yeah. took something that I, he said this guy's a racist and like took something that I said out of context um, and it's, people do that man and you got you got to be prepared for that battle rap mm-hmm. you've got to know going into battle rap if somebody says something about you it's fa- as far as that crowd is concerned it's fact mm-hmm. and you've got to be prepared for and you know what? you've got to just accept it if someone's saying that and you can't think of a flip as well if you're not in the mood I was in that battle I couldn't flip because I was too nervous yeah. but um if someone's doing that, you just got to accept that is fact. As far as this battle concerned, I'm I'm racist. I've got to spit this third round as this racist guy. <laughs> so and, like, and you, you, got, be- you just got to do it. Well, and you begin by calling him out as racist. 
Um, oh, so what's your which bars that? Uh, light work. You call them racist as fuck. Oh no, I said not. Um, you created a group where being mixed. Um, yeah, yeah. But mixed I mean, racist as fuck. Saw that it was racist as fuck and started changing. Like that's why I said. Oh, that. I said, saw you, that. You noticed okay, it and then changed go. it. To be fair, I was saying like it, it originally that looks like a racist. Yeah, thing, yeah, but yeah. You, you changed that. Okay. Um, so I, I did. Try that to was say, uh, you know, that was very very, racist, very but... slanderous from me there. I will uh, I will admit <laughs> that. <laughs> cool. It was a misunderstanding. Um, but yeah, um, talking about uh, how Heretic had sort of was meant to do a doubles match with Danny Jack apparently, and mm. um, that didn't kick off. Um, slightly choking here. Uh, I think this is probably the most noticeable where you're kind of struggling to get some of your bars out so, here. Slightly is being kind. It was a repetitive <laughs> thing. It was a repetitive thing. Let's face it. You but, know, um, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Um, Got the bars out. Uh, I I love love the use of the word dysphoria. Just like hearing that in a battle. Um, that's quite nice. You, uh, mm, that that got nothing as well. But yeah. maybe it's just too. I'm a dysphoria. This dis for just just the way you you know, the way you pronounce it is um is excellent. I love I love because it. it was like, it was double word play. Like yeah, it was good. I was I was trying to go for the um your agenda and your agenda mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and dysphoria dysphoria and it's just like. I, th- I thought when I wrote it, I thought, okay, I got it. <laughs> Maybe I could have structured it a little bit better to make it hit harder. Yeah, and then and then similarly, you have your on viewpoint um, sort of scheme, which uh, uh, that's what I was trying to talk about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. I said if I spat that at training days, that would have popped mm-hmm. because the training days crowd watches all the battles. But that's a reference to Janny Jack and Sleepy G's two on two. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, uh, but like you say, we, there was a room of Mosh team fans. Um, yeah. So you know, it was th- that was really going to pop. But that's 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 why Heretic approach that battle better than me yes totally and um then we have your final football uh reference i hope it's not your last one but your final one on tape oh. so far edgar davitz um, yeah which is okay quite an obvious one but you know lenny kravitz and edgar lenny kravitz. kravitz edgar davitz i like that one yeah. uh yeah that is nice uh <laughs> um, my favorite football bars i said <laughs> yeah yeah classic um you also call out uh danny jack for bragging about views he didn't earn I um, call him out three times yeah you round. call him out a lot in this round because yeah, i wanted to battle him yeah. we're gonna battle him. we're gonna battle at some point are you well, we kind of said we want to battle on beat. I don't think me versus him at uh, acapella would be a good battle. No, it wouldn't. So you said, let we've never done on beat. We both want to get into that. Let's battle each other on beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like on beat trial. So hopefully that will happen this year. And um, yeah, and then you just end it with kind of pointing out uh, his hair and like I literally just killed the crop. Um, yeah, and the handshake's kind of flat at the end, no? Or um, so someone I. I've not watched the very end of that battle okay. back. I kind of watched. Up I might, to the I point might be reading I into it. I mean, it's you, no, know, you know. I watched. I watched it up to the point when I watched. I've actually only watched it about once. I watched it up to back to the point where I do the the multi thing because I wanted to see how that come across on camera. Mm. Again, I, that was one of the bars I was happy about. That really hit. Yeah. Um, doing the the twenty syllable multi, but that yeah, that was someone told me that someone said to me why why doesn't he shake your hand back or something and I'm like what does that happen and I'm like I haven't seen it back um... but apparently he kind of looks a bit um. I don't really know why, because we were really cool after the battle, but he looks yeah. sort of like... Well, I mean, if, um, if you were really cool after the battle, then there's no, you know, there's no need yeah, to Yeah, you know what I mean? Really, but apparently it come across... I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about him, just no, saying no, apparently no. he... Maybe he was shot, that surprised I was going in for a handshake straight after the round, because yeah. people don't really do that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, um, that kind of sums up all the battles so far. But um, obviously, just after this, you were going to be on the Christmas card, um, teaming up with yeah. Harry Baker. I mean, how did that come about? Are, are you guys, so you guys know each other then? You're, you're friends outside um, of this? Yeah. Harry's a really, really close friend of mine. Oh, He's that's one good. of better friends. So um, we, we kind of... I knew him before I did Don't Flop through poetry and stuff. And we we work for the same uni, man. We both go to Bristol. He's oh, graduated. Right? Yeah. He's graduated now. But um, So I hang out with him a lot in Bristol in, our, in his final year. Um, so we've been talking for a while about doing it possibly a two-on-two two. i said to him literally in the start i was like he said to me i only want to do a two-on-two two after you've had a few battles because i don't want it to be like you coming across as the angle of like oh he's a shit one mm-hmm. he's a newbie mm-hmm. who's just with harry because he's good yep so he sort of wait till i've had a few battles that like 7bw of course was a big big thing to yeah be you're, you're, like you're, you're announced i think now yeah. we're at a level where i'm he's he's obviously he's better than me but i'm not like far behind him you know what I mean? So we kind of thought, okay, cool, this is a good time. Let's do a battle. Mm-hmm. We hollered at Juan and Rob because we heard they wanted to battle. We're like, do you want to battle? And they said, yeah. I uh, was like, you know, excited of that. He was like, that sounds really good. Yeah. Put it together. Juan had some personal issues. Right. Um, Christmas party. Hopefully he's all right now and that. Um, I, I didn't really ask him too much about it, but um, we didn't we didn't do it there. Harry did a last minute one with Soljitsu. And yeah, it's just not going to happen for a while, man, because Harry's away for three months. And... Rob Wilson's away, uh, finding himself. So um, I don't really know what he's but, doing. But I, mean, <laughs> he's, like, he's just, like, I guess I'm just surprised. Got a gap I, here or something. Yeah, I wouldn't have. If I just watched your battles in a bubble, I would have. I wouldn't have seen you ever doing a two-on-two. Really, 
I just I don't know. It's because you're such a writer. I just oh, it would be interesting to see how you work with a partner. I suppose. Yeah, no, I, we're interested as well. To be honest, I wrote like or pretty much a round worth of stuff for Juan and Robin. It was all just funny. Like we mm. kind of go. I'll probably go for that approach a little more. You know what I mean? Um, take it a bit more light hearted. I also think the two on two is just really interesting. I don't think many people are doing it in the UK at the moment. No, no, no. There's not how many teams can you name who are active, like who could challenge Shuffle to Marlo. I feel like if you, me and Harry were to personally keep battling solo, it would take us a long time to be considered for a title shot. Yes, it so would like be think, well. if you're thinking like if you want to do something in battle rap or make a statement, if we do two on twos, man, the dream would be to battle Shuffle and Tia Marlo. I love those; they're they're incredible. To battle them for a title is probably like the dream of battle rap. Yeah, I think so. Like the... I think to, that that's that's why I'd like to do two on twos. Not just because of that, I think we can make good battles as well. But in terms of getting some kind of acclaim or getting a lot of people interested in your shit. I think that's a good path to take. Yeah, I know. I think that um, Shovel T and Marlow, especially as a doubles battle, they always bring out the best in their opponents as well. Like their the match at five fifth birthday with C Major and Crack is brilliant. Yeah, uh, the one at sixth with Zen and Dialect is fa- Dialect is fantastic yeah, I love that as one well. That's yeah. a really really good like. Zen and Dialect, I liked them, but I was a bit like, oh, okay, I'm more of a Marlow. But watching, I was like, God, this writing's brilliant. Like really funny stuff. Marlow um, and sorry, yeah. Zen and Dialect's rounds grew on me the more I watched that battle. Mm. Mm. at first I was like body bag yeah. and then I watched it back a few times I was like nah actually this is quite a close battle yeah, yeah. but Shuffle T and Marlo just kind of edged them every round yeah and um, like, you're right they bring out the best in their opponents and they still win that's well what, they, so they almost bring out the best Dirtbag Dan and Caustic were absolute trash against them but I mean uh, they yeah, are that's, that's, kind of trash anyway so that's, that's Americans they're not as good as us that, that's <laughs> it <laughs> definitively <laughs> definitively nah, Caustic again he's, he's dope as well yeah yeah um, so just to wrap up, um, as we always do on this, um, just want to ask a few questions, a few like just general quick fire inside the Battler Studio kind of things, if that'd be okay. Um, yeah, to man. Go through. Sounds really good. So, um, just first of all, uh, what is your favourite King of the Dot battle? Seems we're just, just speaking about that. Favourite King of the Dot battle? Mm. Either Disaster, um, I- I'd say Disaster's rounds against Jonai might be my favourites. Okay. But as a battle, that wasn't a good good enough battle. Yeah. My favourite battle is probably Ur vs DNA, actually. That is an amazing battle, yeah. I love mm. that battle. Oh, the breakdown, whatever decomposes, and just like... Yeah, that's just three really good the, rounds. Um, the video production on that whole event, that Vendetta event, it just looks awesome as well. Like, it's one of the best-looking battle events ever. Oh, yeah, had a nice feel that one. Yeah, yeah. brilliant feel, yeah. And just like, I don't know. I know it's just like lush one and organic, but you get the feeling that it's really important. Like it's not just some sort of thing that's gonna go on YouTube and you know whatever, but um, yeah, I know. So, I know what you mean. so your your favorite um, your favorite band or artist that isn't hip hop affiliated? My what artist? Band or artist? Oh, I thought you said band dot uh, artist. Uh, right. It's not a band dot. <laughs> um, band or artist that isn't hip hop. Um, God, you caught me off guard there. Right. So do, I'm I'm really multi genre music fan, man. Like I I like so much stuff. Um, I I might even say. Growing up, just is just from growing up. Maybe not now, but I really like Linkin Park. Wow! And they weren't hip hop. They kind of they they fused well, it in, and then that I mean, kind of I, I, led I me think into they have too much of a hip hop influence to accept. Oh, that's that fair enough. That's fair enough. I'd say it's uh, people like them, um, the punk rock bands of that era, okay. man. Like the Sum Forty Ones, the Good yeah. Charlottes, the Blink One Eight Twos. I've grown up, man. I used to yeah, that, love them. I mean, yeah, anyone else kind of singer songwriters, man. I'm a I'm a big fan of Jason Derulo, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is weird. Everyone's like, why do you like Jason Derulo? You're like a rapper, I'm like bro, just. Let me let me be me, man. Conscious beginnings, man. That's, <laughs> that's the only thing that's important. Um, okay, so yeah. we're almost done. Um, I also a quick question to you, really, that I won't ask other people, but I'm just interested in as someone who is a poet and is a battler. Is there any poets that you think would make good battlers? Anyone yeah. on the scene right now? No, no. Okay. I think there's so many good poets. Mm. I just I wouldn't want to see him do battle, man. I just think it can. Oh, it's such an exciting some, some thing though, when they cross over. Person. Like, right? I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, poets who are active, kind of right now you on the spot, right? You now. know what? I just, I just don't. I just, I know so many poets, and I, I rate them as spoken word artists. And battling's, it's, it's a lot about rapping as well, man. Like being a good rapper, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I don't think a lot of poets would be good rappers. Even people I know who are good at writing wordplay and multis, and they use that kind of style, but they wouldn't have the battle persona delivery. I don't even think I do that much, and it's like yeah, other people I, even less so than me. Yeah, and. I I wouldn't ever encourage someone to go into battle rap unless they really wanted to do it mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Well, just to wrap up then, just one final thing. Um, in the same way, you might be aware that URL occasionally do like one-offs where they'll just put two big battlers against each other, not on a card. They'll just do a battle and maybe have some like you know tryouts as well, kind of like training days, I suppose, in a certain sense. Yeah. Um, 
if don't I, I i personally think this should happen but i don't know if don't flop will take any heat of it they should do a one-off and they should do you three rounds versus soul uh they should just do it because i mean you're not trying to be Wait, the champion. Me versus soul, i'm sorry. saying you versus soul should go down on don't flop this year right is that something you're interested in <laughs> if it got offered to me i'd take yeah, it without i just thinking i just about it. i don't think they but should... i don't think i would you wouldn't i've been i've been close to getting a battle with quill recently mm-hmm. i think that's more likely mm-hmm yeah i guess but, so. um, and he's he's sick but i'm kind of saying writer. in in the vein of one-offs where they just throw people together that don't have to have any legacy or whatever i just think you and craft you and soul would make a great battle i just i just think you're both very <laughs> you know intelligent what, like, writers and not just because if you're, it happened not because a, it's pen dream, game but... and that but just because you're both really really good and i, I know you'd both write for it no um, no you know. what to to be considered as as worthy of an soul is is at the moment at this point in my career yeah is a massive, massive humble well, thing. Well, I mean, you're so, just, just getting better and better, man. So, yeah. um, that if that was offered to me, something like that, that kind of battle, right. well, um, yeah, I would take it without really thinking about it, man. <laughs> Even if it was next week, I'd be like, oh, so I've got to write. Yeah, it's but, just um, like I wish Don't Flop did like a rookies versus vets. I don't know if you saw that on URL. They did like yeah, a whole yeah, that'd event. be an interesting. Like, I don't think they'd want to do something that URL have done. No, I mean, yeah, it just because they, they're, like, they're you know, arrogant but, enough as it is. Yeah, like exactly. we're the most respected. Exactly. So like. Even though Don't Flop's infinitely better mm-hmm. than the URL, that would just feed into their ego if Don't Flop yeah. were to kind of uh, do something they've done. Yeah, yeah. But um, maybe like mid, I'd like to see it maybe in another capacity. Rookies, I think yeah. you could pull it off and mm-hmm. put some rookies against some vets. Mm-hmm. Um, that'd be cool. Tony D vs Raptor, I guess, kind of falls into that category. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he um, mentions yeah. it as well in the battle actually. Uh, T yeah, T top. He... That's why this rookie versus yeah, event. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Great, bot. but no, that that'd be cool, man. Otherwise, I've got a couple opponents yeah. in mind. I'm not really one for call outs. So who are you, who? Um, I mean, how many how many times are you looking to battle? Are you looking to be as busy as last year or? Uh no, I, I, I finish my degree in that at the moment, so that'll be March. No, like that'll finish like May or so or June. But I pray. If I got invited to Checkpoint, I'd want to battle there. I don't think I will at this point, just because activity and they've already announced Tenchu. I think they're going to get some big names. But mm-hmm. if I got invited to, if it was a two-day event, maybe. So if I get invited to Checkpoint, I'll battle there. Um, otherwise, not before that. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, Craft, uh, Danny. No, a pleasure, um, man. It's for coming cool. on. This has been this has been great. Um, as ever, this has been Battle Rap Resume. Uh, you can get on us at Twitter at Battle Rap Resume, Gmail. Uh, browratrosemay at gmail.com of course and we're on YouTube so if you want to listen to any past episodes or subscribe to us on iTunes it'd be great actually if anyone could um, leave any reviews on iTunes that's the one thing that seems to influence like the um, the, the kind of the, the meter as it were the parameters of how they measure success and if you get like a lot of reviews and ratings it pushes you up in the rankings and you also get like visibility on the homepage I mean it's a minor thing but if you've got the time if you just do it on iTunes that'd be really appreciated but um, yeah as ever I've been your host Tom Quee thanks so much for listening uh, Crafty Thank you so much for coming on, man. And um, yeah, we shall uh, see you in about a month or so. All right, take care. Bye. All the wealth in one place. Now the bankers they in disrepute it, staring it exists. But those wankers they don't distribute it, biggest criminals. But they ain't gonna be handcuffed. They don't tax you for your mansion, cause you're morally bankrupt. Poverty don't bother long as properties popping. The wealth deposited in posh pockets just to profit yourself. They say the proof is in the pudding. When you get your returns, you make profits to roll up to get your dessert. But I don't care about the competition or the number one position. When I write songs, I write wrongs through my compositions. When I write wrongs. They don't wanna listen, what if everybody stands in one position? Signs one petition, camera must go. All the rest of you cronies and Tories, you kips, all the rest of you Tonys, I won't add here to the politician. No ads here, I'm on a mission, no lads here. This proper Britain, get a facts clear in a proposition. You know it's odd when nobody's even a equal seeking the peace. I believe in the people, seek to deceive all the peeps in the streets. We see there's a sequence that leads to a sequel. Wars and warships, swords and lordships, capitalist corps and they torture corpses. Ignore the poor and implore the purest. If you draw the sword, you'll fall before it. Well, I'm never gonna draw, settle the score, but no weapon. Of a war. Put them under pressure with a method and a cause Made a letter of the law for the better of the poor Cause someone in leisure whenever, whatever The weather father's no pleasure, no umbrella when it pours it Hammer blow with the metal of a force, cause a metaphor I meant together we're a force